to the interactive part, you will be able to hear and then, of course, participate in this uh, meeting. So uh, just a brief introduction, Dr. James Babawagetti has been, if not uh, uh, the most, but you will be able to hear and then, of course, participate. Dr. James has been one of the most profound people that we've had in the poultry industry. You know, I was in one of his meetings and I was really very glad that in this very trying time in the poultry industry, somebody like Dr. James is available to give us more insight, more cutting edge technology that we need to be able to navigate our way through the big hazard uh, uh, happening in the industry. It's not really been an easy time for farmers, the increased cost of feed, the increased cost of drugs, uh, and then of course the stress that some of our staff hands uh, poses. But of course with more knowledge, somebody said the more you know, the better you do. Uh, with more knowledge in the industry, and then uh, some of the insights we're going to be hearing uh, in today's class, you can better able make good decisions and of course help survive the intense uh, pressure that we have in the industry. Today, we are going to be covering heat stress. I have two of my friends coming from uh, Nairobi yesterday. And when they got to Lagos, one of the first thing they said was that Nigeria is too hot. Uh, so we know it's hot. We also understand that uh, the birds to have life in them. And if we are not able to manage the heat that we currently have, of course, we'll have a lot of uh, loss in production and otherwise. But of course, I cannot let the cat out of the bag. The professor, the, the, the person that will be taking the class today is already here, Dr. James Babawagetti. And I need not introduce him. Uh, everybody in the poetry, you know, I, I was in a meeting and I asked, who don't know Dr. James Babawagetti? Nobody raised their hands. So every one of us know him. He's been to so many places, training big farms, large farms, small farms, medium scale farm. He's been a consultant to most of the large scale farm we have in Nigeria. Of course, he's the general manager in charge of sales and marketing at the Mon Nigerian Limited, the popular Kepro uh, drugs that we all patronize. He's going to be taking the next one, two hours to train us. What I will ask that every one of us should pick while you're with your phone or you're with your laptop or whatever device you're using, you pick a sheet of paper, jot down the points and help us save the livestock, the poultry industry together. I'm happy to, at this point, hand over, to, hand over the lecture to Dr. James Baba Wagetti, the General Manager Sales and Marketing at the More Nigerian Limited. Thank you, everyone. I will see you at the end of the training when we're going to be taking question and answer. Have a wonderful day. Over to you, Dr. James. Thank you, Dr. Femi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Femi, for that wonderful introduction. And good afternoon, fellow farmers. First of all, I want to appreciate Farmer Alert for partnering, partnering with Adamo Nigeria Limited to bring this program this afternoon. And we have some people are watching on YouTube currently, not only the webinar. And if you do understand, you can go back to the YouTube later and watch it. And maybe at the end of the program, maybe Farm Alert will uh, help us share the YouTube so that uh, you can keep on watching and watching. And also you can share to follow fellow farmers that were quite difficult to attend this webinar. So that's what I can say. Well, today we deliberately bring this topic, heat stress in poultry management. Just like uh, Dr. Femi have said, I don't need to elaborate on the importance of heat. So management and solution by yourself, Dr. Wageti of Adamo, and like uh, he has right, rightly said, Adamo, we are into importation of veterinary product and we are also farmer and we import product from five countries but the one that they are known also with is Kepro which is we are importing from uh, Holland and we deliberately stay with uh, Holland because 
a lot of our uh, partners go to the Middle East and China because of you know regulation in uh, Europe. They make it be too stiff, and that why our product too expensive. But we refuse to stay there and stay with quality. Though people say our product is very expensive, but the quality is there, and that's what we are known with. Other more with quality, consistent and persistent. So heat stress. First of all, I want us to look at what are the causes of stress in animal, especially in poultry, before we now go into heat stress. Well, from I've been in the industry for 28 years now, and uh, when you talk of stress in poultry, for me, I classify into five, into four. That's the environment stress, feeding stress, sickness stress, and management stress. If you take the feeding stress, we have change of diet and feed. It's also a stress. Or if insufficient feed for the birds, it's also cause stress in them. They will also have insufficient water. A lot of farmers don't pay attention to water, but water is an important, is number one nutrition for poultry. So insufficient water is also cause stress to the poultry. Then if you look at sickness, if you look at it in my column, I put it in red. Sickness is danger and that is disease. It's also a stress to the poultry. Then if you now look at the other management, we have transportation, we have vaccination, we had handling. The way you transport your bus from one point to the other is also cause stress on them. If you are doing vaccination on the farm, it's also a, it's a stress or the handling. When you do the beginning, these are stress. But now if you come to the environment, we have, we have identified about six, that's all familiar surroundings. Maybe you are transferring birds from rearing to cage, or those are, point, those are by point of lay, you travel from one farm to another, it's a big stress on the farm. And why do I say so that? I, based on my own research for this year, if you, if you are transferring birds from deep litter or even rearing to, even rearing to lay section, you will lose less than 100 grams of weight which is a, is a big stress on the bird. Then noise, noise is a stress. And that's why many farms will put, don't, don't horn. You feel the power of sideboard, don't horn. Because by the time you horn, you stress. No. So noise is a stress to the bird. Then you look at defective ventilation. A lot of farms, you find that the building is not well ventilated. And that's also a stress for the bird. Then overcrowding, overcrowding of birds. These are also environment. Overcrowding of birds in a pen, it also causes stress. Then you now come to humidity, it's also causes stress. Though humidity is not a problem in the north, but it's a major problem in the south. Then we now have temperature. And out of all these stresses, our topic for today is the temperature. And if you talk of temperature, you are now talking of heat stress. I've been doing seminar on overcrowding, on change of diet, insufficient water, disease. But today, my topic is on temperature and that is heat stress. Now we ask ourselves, what is heat stress? Like I see from my, the, from my diagram, at least it's explained very well. But heat stress, it is a condition that occurs when a bird is exposed to above optimal temperature and humidity. There are two things there. But there's normal temperature and humidity for bad. But when the condition is above, you are exposed about above the optimal temperature and humidity, they tend to be a problem. And in the southwest, humidity is the major problem, especially for brailler and, and layer. And that's why sometimes if you are in the southwest and you find out that in the morning you have high mortality, in the afternoon, no mortality, in the evening, no mortality. If you come back in the morning, you see high mortality, it's humidity. So you, have, you know at the back of your mind, it's humidity. I'm going to explain that as we, as we progress. Then this, as a farmer, I advise that you have this, all farmer, whether you are brela, whether you are turkey, or whether you are into layer, you must have this equipment on your farm. If you don't have it, please go and get one today. In those days, uh, when you are doing broody, you look at the behavior of the chicks. If the if the weather is too cold, they move to the source of the heat. And so if the it's too hot, they move away from the from the source of the heat. If the the, the place is okay, 
they scatter. Later, they brought up thermometer, only thermometer. People don't look at the thermometer, oh, it's 35. Oh, it's maybe 20, 31 to 34 for the first one week. They don't even care of humidity. These are even the thermometer, you find out that some, some farmers are placing the thermometer even above the level of the chips. If you go to different farm, a thermometer is at the, at the level of the chips. But today now is that you need three things in beauty. You need temperature, you need time, you need humidity. So that you know how to guide you. You need temperature, you need time, you need humidity. Why I say time is that because from 12 in the southwest, from 1 a.m., temperature will drop, humidity will rise up. And that one can even guide you on your farm. So please try to record temperature and humidity. I've done training online, don't ask me, I tell my training, there is right temperature and right humidity when you are keeping bad. Even though your temperature is correct and the humidity is high, there will be problem. And this is uh, the prediction for 2022, onset of rainfall. Currently, in the southwest, rain started in February, that is 28 February, and even rainfall yesterday. So the heat stress may be reduced in those areas. If you look at up, but if you now go up, north central, northeast, there is still going, there will be no rain till up to May. And if you go to like May, no far, far, till June. So that means there's going to be, if you are a farmer around Adamawa, around, uh, around Kano, Kaduna, Zamfara, Yobe, it means, it means in Taraba, it means that you are, you are going to face heat up to June. And maybe this training is for them. For, for those that are in the Southwest, at least the rain has started. So the issue of heat stress may not be there. But maybe August break. But if you are from Southwest, you can just listen to it so that you can plan your selling for next year. This is a prediction for 2022. So if you are a farmer for up north, listen to this training so that you know how to apply it on your farm. And why are we, why are we talking of heat stress in poultry business? We look at birds are susceptible to high temperature. One, because those birds, they don't have sweat gland. As a human being, if the water is too hot, you sweat. But the poultry, they don't sweat. They don't have sweat gland at all. And that's why they are prone to heat. And they also have feather body. They have feather that prevent insulation, evaporation. So they have that issue. They also fat in nature, especially the broiler. People that are fat, even human beings, they are prone to heat. So take a look of the bath. So they are fat in nature. And also they have high body temperature. You know the temperature of a chicken that is very high. So that 40, 41, that's the body temperature. So because the temperature is very high, coupled with the high temperature, they are prone to heat, heat stress. I will also discover that brainless are more susceptible to heat than layers. I will also discover that good layers, because those bad, why I say good layers, we discover that those bad that are not laying, they may, they may they somehow result to heat. That was if you are raising birds, even the pullets, they may not die with the heat, but it will only affect the growth rate. But those in the laying section, that's why you have immortality. So if you have a bad layer in laying, in, in the laying floor, during heat period, they may not even die. So that's why I put my, my topic is that good layer, good, good layer in cage, the layers on depleter. So if you have layers, good layers in cage, and good layer in depleter, those in the cage may be prompt heat than those on depleter. And look at the chicken, how chicken respond to different temperature. If there is comfort zone from 21 up to 32, like small, ideally to yourself, but you know, you're in Nigeria, but 30, 32 is still a comfort zone for the bird. But anything below that also, if it's below 10, 15 degrees centigrade, you find that the bird tends to eat more feed to consume the heat for themselves. But the, the moment the heat goes to 37, 38, 40, that's why you have the crisis, even mortality. So this is how the bird responds to different temperature. Then let's all look at, I tend to make the slide be very fast so that we have time for discussion. If you look at what are the effects of heat stress on the birds, there are two types. There are behavioral effects, there are psychological effects. Though the psychological effect 
it's more of technical, it's more of veterinarian or the animal science topic. You are obviously going to mention, but I will take my talk, my talk on behavioral effects. If you look at the behavioral effect is that one, if there is a heat, the bird will try to move from other birds. You see the other bird, even in cage, they try to move from each other. Or in different, they try to move from each other. That, that, no, that you should know that there is heat problem. Then move against cooler surface, especially those birds umbrella in the depleter. You find out that they try to move to the cooler surface or, what, or into moving air stream, or there is air moving. You see the to cooler the other side. Then whether they are inside cage or depleter, when there is heat, they tend to leave the wings away from the body to reduce its motion. So anytime you go to a farm and you discover that you find the bird is lifting its wing up, that means there's heat. So without the bird telling you, that's a behavioral effect. The moment you see the bird is a cage or a even young chicks, you are ruby, and they decide to lift the wing up, like the way you see this one, how they are lifting the wing, wing lift. That shows that the weather is hot for them. And they, then they try to punch slowly. You can see how they're opening mouth slowly. Then rest to generate, rest to generate by resting. So now they like Borella, you see, you see that they just sit down so that they reduce activity and the panting. Then after that one, they reduce feed intake. You find out that the bird will not be eating too much again. The feed they are giving you, they may be able to eat. Then increase water consumption. You now discover that there will be increase in water consumption. Then you discover that there's divert blood from internal organs to the skin, which is taking the skin color. So if you observe some mortality, if you are careful as a family survivor or the owner, you discover that if a bird dies, you, if you look closely, you see the skin is darkening because during heat stress, the blood divert from internal organs to the surface so that it can cool the body. That was happening in, in poultry. Then let's look at the psychological effects. I'll just explain this one, but the detail is, is only for the professor will on the, understand it. If you look at the physiological effects, normally in birds, blood pH is controlled by the lungs and the kidney. So let's have that one at the back of your, our mind. You know there is a blood pH in the bird, and it's being controlled by the lungs and the kidney along with the various both system, but it's not, but the major one, it is the lungs and the kidney that control the blood pH in the bud, which prevent rapid change in the pH of the bud. But however, as the pressure is increasing heat stress bud, you know when the bud is having heat, it be panting, it's opening mouth. As it's opening its mouth, it releases carbon dioxide out. As you see the bud is panting, but that's a surgical effect now. As you see the bird is panting, it's panting, it's panting. What it means that it releases carbon dioxide from the body and that decreases the level of blood carbon dioxide in the blood. And when that one is reduced, it leads to respiratory alkalosis. That's an elevated blood pH. That problem will go high. The pH will go high. And with that, you see the bird will die, especially early in the morning. So heat stress will also deplete potassium and other minerals in the body, altering the delicate, delicate electrolyte balance in the body. But this is more technical. These are the diagram I just put, it's technical. You see, as the body is panting, you know they are panting to leave heat, from, to leave heat from, from the body. And as they are panting, they are releasing carbon dioxide. As they are releasing carbon dioxide, they will decrease in carbon dioxide in the blood. And, and the, at the end of the day, the, the kidney will not try to buffer at the end the acid base balance at the, last, at the end of the day, that one is see water diarrhea during heat, heat stress. And people know it, the bird will even die. And like I said, blood during heat, heat stress, blood flow also changes. When there's heat stress, the blood flow in the bird changes. There's what we call vasodilation and vasoconstriction. So more blood is flowing to the skin. Like I said before, you see the skin is dirty. You see the breast muscle, if you open the blood, you see the blood, the comb, will be, the wattle, all, the blood will flow that area and the tongue and the larynx, the trachea, the veterinarian will go that one. And then the abdominal moves about 400 percent, the way where the blood is flowing to. But there will be no blood to the reproductive system, the digestive system, and the bone. That was the in Brella, you see paralysis. And that was because there is no blood supply to the most of the blood divert from the GIT 
If they visit an organ, that one say the body is all feed. They're not eating food most of the time. So I don't want us to know that one. Look at this one now. Uh, it's a video. I don't know why I'm showing the video. So here I just bring a video that how the body is panting. Okay, maybe I, okay. You can see, you see how the body is panting. So when you see a body panting like that, you can see how it lifts its wing, as I say, how the wing is lifted. You can see it's, it's breathing too much. As it's breathing like that, that's more carbon dioxide is coming out of the body. So next one, like, okay, sorry. Like the panty, as, like I said before, the panty, it increases vitamin rate, decreases carbon dioxide level in the blood, and then de decreases vitamin alkalosis, then deep straight calcium, potassium, they are lost. And that one will tell someone that during heat stress, you don't need vitamin. What you need is electrolyte. So once someone says, go and buy vitamin, go and buy vitamin. No, what you need is electrolyte, not vitamin, it's electrolyte. But do that, most of the vitamins that are coming with electrolyte, you should go and look for product that contains good electrolyte. Because what, are, what, what is losing is calcium, potassium, sodium, and chloride. That's what's losing at that time. And that's why we, we recommend like vitamin trace oral, a lot to supplement the drinking water to replenish the lot of sodium, chloride, potassium, and bicarbonate in the urine or at the mineral light. Also, psychological effects. You find out that this, the eggshell is not good because of the loss of the carbon dioxide that alter the pH, pH. So there'll be low, low retention of calcium by the body. Before you know it, you see crack, small size egg on the farm. This is a result of physiological effect of heat stress. And if there's heat stress, the number of egg on the farm will reduce, the egg size will reduce, the egg weight will reduce, the eggshell thickness will reduce, the eggshell weight will reduce, the eggshell percentage strength will also reduce. And in Brella, what you notice low when there is heat in Brella, like I now explained on poultry, but in Brella, you know you have low body weight and high FCR. These are, these are two things. There are three things you observe in Brenda. Low body weight, high FCR, and then death. You see mortality because of heat. But in the poultry, you see a lot of issues in the layer. Then, then, then look at the visible sign. They are like the variable effect of the visible, visible signs of heat stress in poultry. In general, poultry will suffer heat stress when all the following signs are evident. One, they are gasping, like I said before, they are panting. There's stupor, stagger, or normal convulsion. So, for my this may be because there is new cancer, but no, it's because of this stress. The slow, slowness is very slow, it's very umbrella. These are some of the visible signs you, you see. You will see increase out of urine, further looks of electrolyte, as explained that one, wet droppings, as explained that one, thirsty, as explained that one, and then ascites, incident increase. I think I've talked on that one. There's increase in cannibalism. Do you watch stress? You see cannibalism. The birds are taking themselves. That's due to heat. And more carcass downgrade, like in Burela. They like body weight, poor color, coloring, and rough skin, especially in Burela. Then air protection drop for no apparent reason. Sometimes the protection just drop without no apparent reason. The birds are, you know, there are some places that say the birds are not dying, but protection drop. These are the signs of heat stress. Reduce excess, I explained before, poor excess quality, as explained before, then increase in mortality. These are the visible signs, the behavior you can see. Then the invisible sign of heat stress in poultry, like I explained before, I'm just, I'm just trying to explain the body, the diagram and uh, on the uh, behavioral, which is the sign you see, and then physiological, I explained them. This also what you call invisible sign of heat stress, the same thing like physiological. One, the pH of the blood plasma rises because of the carbon oil released by the bag. The pH gives itself for the urine output increases, so those electrolytes because the kidney wants to stabilize the pH of the blood. So because of that, the urine output increases and so does electrolytes. 
And also because the bath is drinking too much of water, too much of water, that's why they also they will also have diarrhea. Then bicarbonate is lost, as I told you one. Then some stress hormones appear in the blood, like corticosteroid. That's why you need to give vitamin C. Sometimes you don't want to wait that because the bath normally synthesizes vitamin C. Normally, on the normal concept, they produce vitamin C. But when the weather is too hot, they cannot be able to produce vitamin C again because of the stress hormones appear in the blood. So that's why you need some vitamin E or selenium to give to the bath. Then let us look at hysteres. The also the hysteres, it also impair gut barrier. You find out that it's on farm, during hysteres, you see mortality increasing. There's high mortality during stress, during heat stress. A lot of farmers are using drugs for no apparent reason. Because during heat stress, in a healthy bath, there was called tight junction protein seal, spread between the epithelial cells. So during an intact gut barrier, that helps to prevent pathogen or toxin from entering the bloodstream. However, during heat stress, the tight junction protein can be disrupted, which allows pathogen or toxin to circulate, to circulate. So if you look at the GIT, it has a GIT, there are what we call the epithelial cells. They are tied by gut barrier. They call it gut, gut barrier. It's tight. But during heat stress, because of the heat stress on the bath, it tends to open and bacteria cannot penetrate and enter the circulatory system. That's why you have infections of farm. In fact, those farms don't have good management. That's why you notice that one. And this is how to explain. These are the, in, uh, the dipterial cells. You can see how it is tight, see how they, they are, it's tight. But if there is history, it's open like this, and bacteria will just pa pass through. Let me put a sorry. So that, uh -huh. so that I can use my pointer for us to understand. So I can use my pointer. Sorry. You can see that this place now, these are telling intestinal mucosa cells. You can see the tight, normally tight junction is tight, is tight. But during the heat stress, it opens because of the stress. And now bacteria will pass inside the circulatory system, you can see. So we can tell you how to do to prevent that one later. So with this one, we now look at what are the cost of heat stress in Burela and layers. Let's look at what are the cost of all this in, in our, on our farm. One, there's increase in mortality. We call it sudden death syndrome. You see, mother just dying anyhow. Then loss of fertility, especially in, 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 the, in breeders. We discover in males up to 30%, that in male and female, up to 30%. There's increase in metabolic disorder, like instead of anxiety, I've explained before, body metabolism is disrupted, disturbed, especially in Burela. Then bigger out of urine, I explained that one before. Then there's also lower resistance to disease, I've explained that one. Then add a, a capital investment, because during stress, you have to provide shade, it's a money. You have to provide fun, it's a money. You have to provide cooling part like ice block, you'll be giving it additional money. Then water spring class is additional money. These are the cost of maintaining heat stress. Then productivity losses, depressed appetite because the body will not eat. So FCI dropped by drop by 12% in Brela. There is flow growth rate up to 25%. Low ME will discover 8 to 9% project drop during hot weather. Decline in efficient quality, more downgrading as a standard one. Then inferior carcass, especially in Brela. <coughs> and the indigestibility. The body cannot digest the very well and they will not grow. These are the cause of heat stress in Brela and Leia. So now, how do we manage it's stress. I think that's the main topic. I just, that was just a preamble now. How do we manage his stress in poultry? I think that's the cocoa of the topic. His stress in poultry, management and solution. So from my, from my own point of view, there are four major ways you can prevent his stress in your poultry. One, managing the house. And even managing the house is of two types. There's one you can manage the house, managing the house, poultry house outside, and manage the poultry house inside. Then manage feed and feeding. How you can work on the feed and then the feeding. Then water management is key during hot period or heat stress bath. The feed supplement, 
or some using some supplement to use for them. So these are the four major things we identified that farmer can use to able to alleviate the effect of heat stress on the farm. And <clears throat> number one, we now, we now take the management of one managed poultry house. Number one, ensure good ventilation for fresh air movement and heat loss. That's number one. Ensure good ventilation for fresh air movement and heat loss. One, by orient the long houses of your poultry house in an east-west direction. So make sure that your poultry farm is in east-west direction. A lot of farm will go to, they don't just dig in house or they just use the house without the region. So these are the farms that will suffer heat stress. Then poultry houses in tropic should have a good roof insulation. Don't use zinc. Or there are even so far we are telling you that to inflate the farm after you have roof you are you are with asbestos or you are good roof something, you is not inside. Then in open houses, in open sided houses, the width of poultry pen will be a limiting factor. So keep optimal with 20 to 32. That's based on my own finding. Make sure that the width of your the length, I don't have issue. You can go as far as from Lagos to Zamfara. I don't have issue with that. But the width of your house shall not pass 24 to 35 feet. But this is based on temperature, humidity, type of houses, and nature of bath for effective cross ventilation. Meaning that you should have more than two rows. With 24 to 32 is either two or three rows. Anything more than that, you have issue with heat stress or less, but mind you, as I said, it's based on temperature, the humidity in that area and type of houses. If you make too tall, I don't have issue with that. But try to maintain 24 to 32 feet for the width. And either 24 to 32 feet is either two rows or three rows. If you do four rows, you may have heat stress on your farm, definitely. Because it's very difficult to maintain Cross ventilation with more than three rows. And it is even worse if you have more than three rows and the house is not oriented on east west direction. And if the house is not too high with cross ventilation, so such farm will be recording high mortality. That's number one. Then, how design our construction shall not allow direct sun on the bird? Make sure that when you are constructing your house, there should not be direct sun, sunlight on the bird, not on the pen, on the bird. Fix cooling system like industrial fan to maintain pain temperature. I didn't say fan work, industrial fan. Some people are putting, if you go from farm, they are putting a normal ceiling. It will not work. It will not work. Some people are putting the normal uh, house ceiling. That one cannot help. So fix cooling system like industrial fan to maintain pain temperature. And then, Clean cobweb from side marsh of the paint to increase ventilation. We have discovered that if you have cobweb during hot weather, it can prevent air flow by 20% or ventilation by 20%. So if you have a farm and there is cobweb, that means you have heat stress. So please, if you are listening to me, especially those are from the north, make sure there is no cobweb on your wear well marsh or inside the paint. And if you look at Kobo Massive, the, the Habo E. coli, Salmonella, the Habo CRB. So, and sometimes if you have cobweb on the net, it will also spoil the net. So make sure that you clean. There's a program of cleaning your cobweb. Don't wait until the cobweb comes before you clean. And that's why most of the things the farmers are not getting. We'll be pretty to them. Only few are getting it. You must, like I used to tell the farm owners or train farmers that, there should be a schedule of work for poultry attendance, and not verbally. All schedule of work should be written down. When you employ somebody, you have that position or they go training no less than one week, depend on the farm. Don't employ somebody and put his hand pen and start work. It will not work because he will do only the work the people are doing. So there shall be a written for you, should be, you document it. Cleaning of the cobweb every week. You don't wait on the cobweb come. When they are cleaning every week, there is no way cobweb will come. Sweeping flow daily. 
cleaning of the waterline by with hydrochia, maybe once in a week. There's washing of the tank once in a week. There should be a program that a farmer will design and the attendant will sign. And if attendant failed to carry that assignment, there should be punishment measure for such each, each operation will carry its open that the attendant failed to do. But by the time the farmer will be shouting, the manager will be shouting, it will not work. So clean the copper from side mesh of the pen to increase ventilation. I don't understand that. Copper will prevent ventilation by 20%. A grass cover on the ground surrounding the pen will reduce the pressure of sunlight into the, into the house. If you have a poultry pen, make sure you have a grass, not just bare ground. Make sure you plant grass, round and trim it. Once you have and water, it, it, you, reduce, you reduce heat period now. If you have a grass around the pen, but don't allow it to grow too much, so you can bring rodents. You have a grass that people can all trim it, but water it. Once you have a grass like that, it reduces reflection. Vegetation shall be trimmed to avoid blocking air movement and to reduce rodent problem. Especially in both of them, they will have you, they plant a plantain. So many plantain soccer, thinking that it provides shade for the birds. That was in blocking ventilation. There will be no air movement. And even the soccer will be growing, growing, growing too, too plenty. Before you know, it, it, it becomes a rodent, house for rodent, and be eating your feed and, and transmitting disease. Even though you have plantain soccer, Make sure that it, there should be distance. Anyone that's coming up, trim it out. So that's that. Then stop density. The higher the bad density in the pen, the more it produces. So bad in a higher density stock pen tend to absorb each other radiated heat load, which makes heat management more difficult for the bad. So please know the stock density of your farm. You have before you need book your farm. If it's a case. You have no specification for tropic. Don't look at the specification for during rain season because if they do well during rain season, by the time heat comes, you pay for it. So make a specification. If they are depleted also, you should know the standard, no assumption. You measure length and breadth. You know the square meter for layers. You know the square meter for brailers. So you maintain it. So reducing the bad density in one season will give more floor space per bag and allow more heat to escape from underneath their bodies are from the litter. Also, less color pen allowed bugs to move freely to nearby water line. So please make sure the stock density is following correctly. In fact, what I tell my people, my farmer is that during hot weather, it is even better to reduce the stock density than to follow the normal stock density. During, because it is. So this is the orientation of Billy. Just this is what we call is west east west you can see what is the east west is how the sun rises and go down this is sun now how we go down that this is sun this is how you go down so you follow that direction by that you now follow maybe not south or south north there will be no cross ventilation and sun will enter the pen and if there's any time there is rain you see rain will also enter the pen so you always enter if you don't know which one is East to west, the place you have your land, just stay there. Anyway, you see the sun is coming up in the morning. That is east. If you go in there, that's west. You now follow the sun. That's very easy. If you don't have campus, if your handset can even do it with, with internet now, you can even use your handset on your farm to know the location of east to west. If you don't know, just stay on your farm and look at how the sun is moving and build your pen in the direction of the sun. That is east to west. And this is for building. If you have a farm, no for me. Because during hot weather, you may have heat stress problem. You may lose some money. There are some, they don't even have any cover like this. The moment the heat go up, it come back. He go up, come back. So they, this, if you have a farm like that, that no, no cliff that allow air to go out, that farm will suffer its stress. But this is a standard is farm. You have this cliff too. So air will go, the carbon dioxide, ammonia will go and go out. It, this is standard for ventilation in when you are building your pen in the eastward direction. You can see 
low ventilation and free air movement. You can see how you design the, the air will flow like that, go out, so then flow like that through the depression of the wind. So that is how to build the poultry pen to reduce heat stress. And you can see uh, the issue of ventilation. Look at a farm, look at the distance, this east way, the distance is very wide. But this is another farm in the north, precisely around when you are going to Kefi from, I, I went to Abuja to visit some farm. When I saw this poultry farm, I said, this farm may not last. There's nothing about it. I'm not a prophet of doom, but this farm can never, will never make profit. It's not possible. And this is a layer, whether layer brainer, there is no way, no magic that this farmer can make money from this one. Look at that, about almost 10 pen. They even cover it. So this farmer will have invested and that farm cannot, you know, where in the north, cannot survive. There, because there will be no ventilation. So we should try, and even the building of the farm was not even in the east direction. When I saw it, I just pitied the farm. I don't know, I just passed to go to another farm there to do to, to have this one farm. And I saw this, I, I stopped this one. I say it's a problem. So we shall avoid, we shall look for a professional to guide us. Not, not everybody is a professional as a farmer because of that is not the fault of the farmer. Don't say because somebody is animal science or a vet doctor by name and you or HA the animal by name and you, you just give him a job, it will not work. So you look for people that are on the field. Like I'm a veterinary doctor now. If you bring dog for me, I will kill it. I don't know anything about dog. I don't know anything about, I didn't put my mind there after my third year of graduate. I didn't put my mind on dog. I didn't put my mind on, on, uh, on the room now. All my energy on poultry. So there's no way everybody will know everything. So these are a lot of bad consultants and they claim they know, they know it. So you cannot give what you don't have. And that way farmers are just dying all over because of wrong advice. So you have to follow it very well, my dear farmer, especially during hot weather. And this is a farm. These are what I said that if you build, you can see this farm now. What you need that, you know, low trees, shrub block breezes and provide little shade. You know, like, like I said before, some people, if you go to, you see a lot of plantain soccer, a lot near the pen. So breeze is coming like that, it block, it go up. But this is the way it's supposed to be. Air, air flow freely, shade, will not be able to eat out the pen. You know, tall tree, that's what you want. But here now you have the, you have the shade, the soil is still heating the pen. So we don't want that one. And this is a farm that, uh, this is also in Abuja, is our customer by name Ileko. These are standard how to provide shade. You can see the tree, they are tall, there's close ventilation, and now it provides shade. So there's this, this woman now in the north, even the hot weather, no mortality, but I can still maintain. Though she's a veterinarian, so she found the right thing to do. This, this are, there's a special tree that not all trees can provide shade. This is a special tree and they grow very fast. And they provide, look at the, the even the hot weather, it provides cool. There's also cross ventilation. So this help provide shade during hot weather. Then, Two things happen also as a farmer. There's time that temperature rises, humidity drop, especially in the southwest. You know, this during, in the afternoon now, this afternoon, the temperature will go up and then humidity will drop. So when you have, this, that's why I say that, make sure you have that thermometer, that uh, uh, instrument that have the current temperature, humidity, and time. So that you also need time. So the moment you know that temperature has gone up and humidity is down, you need, if you're in the north, you need spray class, like four gas, to cool the temperature. So that's what you can do at that time. That's the effective way of doing it. You speak spray class to place inside the, inside the fire to provide. But if you are in the southwest, south, south you cannot use spray class in southwest. So if, in, if the humidity is high, don't use four gas. Focus also will now increase the humidity in the night about that the morning. So don't use focus when humidity is very high. Like in the southwest, like in Lagos, in part of more, all this area, you can use focus. Maybe there are some part of the southwest, maybe too, I don't know. But in the north, no humidity. So the best way to cool your body in the afternoon 
is by using foga or you spray the birds with water. So that what we, and this is a this is a foga how to use it. This is a, this fog. Okay, let me remove. This out see the foga. You see. Foga utilizes the, the mechanism of evaporating cooling to reduce it, its stress and ensure a drop in temperature. So if you are in the north, make sure you get something like this in your farm. The foga utilizes the mechanism of evaporating cooling to reduce its stress and ensure a drop in temperature. That's the best way to do it. You get a foga. So if you, a many of them are selling foga, we don't sell foga, but we advise you get something like this on your farm. Even once there's no humidity, the best way to treat heat first in poultry. Let me go back to my slide here. Okay, so. But when temperature drop, I've said that if temperature raise and immediately drop, use foga and other mechanism. But if temperature drop and immediately rise, you need fan, not foga. You need fan. And usually it's in the night. Like I said before, is that in the southwest, this is what's happening. Especially in the north, they may have already in the afternoon. Because there's no humidity and the, the temperature is not too high, but would die. But if you come down south, the temperature here may not be higher than the north, but because the humidity is too high in the southwest, in the morning you see mortality. So if you are in the southwest and you wake up in the morning, you pack mortality. In the afternoon, no mortality. In the evening, less no mortality. In the morning, you go back high mortality. What you need is fun. Not that's the only way to solve the problem. Though you can use some additive, vitamin C, vitamin C, selenium, but the effective way and the best way is to put fan. And that fan, the time they need it is from 12 to 3. I've done an experiment even on our farm. By the time we own the generator, I've even stayed for years on the farm. What we are telling you is not maybe the textbook, it's what we have done the experiment. Do you know what weather I stayed there throughout the night? Because if there is no fan, you discover that the birds are dying. So I have to stay on our farm till one o'clock, no mortality go around. But what is two, three o'clock? That's that the birds are dying. Two, three a.m. Those birds are dying in the morning. It's for, go and mark it from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. That's the time. Because that's the high peak of humidity in the southwest. Because humidity starts picking up. When it's 12 o'clock, by the time there is high temperature in the afternoon, when it's six o'clock, temperature will drop, 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 drop. By 12, temperature will drop. Humidity will not take over for that 12 o'clock. You see, humidity will rise, 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 rise. By two, three, that's the high peak of humidity. 88, 90, 95 some place. So when humidity gets to 88, 90, birds cannot survive it. So they will die. When it's four o'clock, the humidity will start dropping, dropping. By five, it drops. So what I did, I have, that's one time, I did it, we did it on generator until 12 o'clock. We now on it from 12 to 4, no mortality. But if you on generator, you on generator from, from maybe 7 a.m., leave it till 12 o'clock and off it, you see mortality. But if you on generator and leave it by 2 or 3, mortality, no mortality. So what are the problem that if you have, if you're in the southwest and you're having mortality in the morning, the only way, try to put farm and let that farm go from 12 o'clock down. Not just on the eight or nine o'clock, maybe after lighting problem is off it. No. By the time you use fan, mortality stop. So that's why I put fan here. So use ventilation. There's no ev this one is evaporation, but here is ventilation. That means if the temperature is high, humidity is low, use evaporation. That's why you have fogger. But if the temperature is low, Humidity is high, use ventilation. These are the two things. So use fan. And if you look at it, this is our farm. This is our, look, at the, look at the industrial farm I'm talking about. 
very big. Look at other farm in the north. This farm is not there again. They now go and put farm. Look at how many, one, two, three. Three tiers, if four tiers cage. And they now come and put this type of farm. It will not work because there is no ventilation with this farm. The what we mean by ventilation is that the farm work with relay. If you work with relay, and the farm is blowing, why it stop blowing, you will not put, like the, the fans, the industrial fans work with relay. And also the position of the fan is also very important. You don't just put fan in a pen like that. You put a certain angle. You look at the pen dimension. You look at the length and the width and the height of the pen. And then the nature of the cage. From there, you measure it. From there, you now do your calculation of how to, how to align your, our, your fan on the pen for effective ventilation. Then after you do that, you now look at the distance. What is the distance from one pen to an, one fan to another? It is based on how the fan is speedy at that point in time. Why is the relay, why, the, why, is, why is the speed of the, the wind will stop, of the fan blowing will stop? Then another fan will now put another fan take away from that place. And that's why you see this one. We, we calculated very well. We took some time. As this one blowing, it will blow up here. This one will take over for this one. This one will take over for the, but no, the bag will be cooled throughout the night because it's removing hot air. This industrial fan is soaking hot air out up. That's the point. By the time you design like that, it's soaking the hot air and push it out. But if you just put fan like that, it will it end up blowing the hot air in the pen. You are just separating the hot air. You like this one now, you're just circulating the hot air. And if you look at this roof, there's no any clip. Look at the up, no clip. But look, you also position the fan towards the clip and suck away the hot air and throw it out. That is how to do it when the temperature is low and humidity is high. But most of farmer, professionally, the farmer is the farmer investor. And they now go and consult people that don't have knowledge in poultry. So please. Always consult if people that know the business, expert. Take your time. Don't be so simple, an animal science. I'm a vet doctor. You conclude you know everything. It's not like that, though. So this manner, this investment, in fact, this farm is a problem. That means they have to change, or then they have to remove the roof and start building and try to put in the, you know, this one will be suffering. And this in the north is a big problem. That is on managing the house. Then on managing the feed and feeding, we all know that during heat stress period, we have said that bugs don't eat enough. Why? Because blood is diverted from the GIT, the visceral organ. So that the bugs don't even eat too much, but drink too more of water. So during heat stress, fish are made more dense with nutrients. Get down my, please get down my statement. There was some farmer, even the finished feed they're using now, we know how to get, we know how to sell content. Because now it's finished feed, the one you are using, or it depends on the feed miller, but if you are milling off it, the formula for during lay, during uh, rain, shall not be a period. Because the bottle don't eat too much. So what you do is that feed should be made more dense with nutrients. So the little feed the bath take it to supply the nutrients. Then vitamin and mineral to compensate for reduced intake. Three things someone must consider when you come to manage feed and feeding based on my own field report or observation or such. Feed with a reduced protein. Protein level in feed shall not be increased. Don't say because you are, lose, you are looking for size of egg production you will not increase protein level in feed. There will be problem because digestion of protein is too hard. So protein from only vegetable source shall be used. Don't use protein for animal source. Don't say, oh, bone meal is cheap. Blood meal is cheap and it has a problem you use or fish meal. These are protein source. To digest uh, 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 animal protein is too hard, especially during hot weather. It increase it, it increases heat production in the in the body too high. So we advise that you should use protein from only vegetable source. 
and withdraw if you're if you're in your formula you are using animal protein withdraw it the protein in general and those for animal sources have higher heat increment value like that that's the reason why you should remove don't use animal protein because protein in general and those from animal source have higher heat increment value that produce more internal heat in the body of the chicks so we advise that during this hot weather supplement your vitamin by using like a capro amino acid in drinking water to compensate for the reduced feed intake of vitamin stress aura we keep on supplementing because in the vitamin stress aura we have high concentration of electrolyte we have high concentration of amino acid and and vitamin so you can use those one to supplement the protein so that after that one you cannot step down then number one. number two reduce the use of cereal grain as a major source of energy reduce it we advise that if you are milli of it replace 10 to 15 percent calorie energy of carbohydrate by addition of one to two percent fat or oil by the time you remove 10 percent 15 percent of like maize or you are using sorghum or millet then by addition of one to two percent fat or oil and the, the heat increment value is less and give better effect in the body of your bird. So by the time any those that are mini feed now, and maybe they are using concentrate, and you use this above 500, you reduce hot weather, you run into problem. You run into problem. So that why sometimes you adjust your formula by using fat. fat. Because why? Fat and oil are also responsible for better absorption of nutrients and increase egg weight because it has linic acid inside. And unique acid is the one that increases size of egg. And production and low the heat increment, which turns allow lower level of heat stress in your body. That's number three. Number two. Like I said, minimize dietary protein. And you can pull at that. Then that adjustment, nutrient adjustment in hot weather. Minimize dietary protein by supplement with amino acid, or you can use the amino light, amitutal, or vitamin oral in this hot weather. Replace carbohydrate with fat, as I explained. Use fat to increase energy in diet and adjust nutrient. Feed a well balanced amino acid level. Not, not my dear farmer, not it. Body temperature increases. I put this on the cover later. In fact, during, in, during lysine deficiency, if your farmer has deficiency of lysine, you, the dog bath will take that who tend to respond to heat stress, they will die more. So those that are using GSC as a source of protein, and plant protein, they may have issue of heat stress. That's from my observation, because lysine is poor in the carbohydrate, uh, GNC is poor in lysine. So any farmer that's using, like in the north now, because of cost, they don't want to use GNC they may like to have his stress because of the use of lysin. But you can supplement it by using lysin, high lysin. You know, if you are using soya like 220, the maximum lysin you use is 0 0.5. If you use one, one kg, you are wasting your money. That's for nutrition, that will come to the maybe in next uh, training. Then supplement fat or oil. Supplemental fat or oil have been beneficially to air production and air quality with yolk weight be more than those who don't supplement with fat. Why? Because oil contains linic acid, and that linic acid tends to increase the weight of the egg. The fat and oil provide poultry with various essential fatty acids, decrease the doseness of the feed, increase the productivity of feed, and improve energy efficiency. So if you are using oil in your feed, it also reduces dust. Don't see dust in poultry. Even the couple will be reduced. Even the feed you don't see dust. So there's no benefit on that one. So you can call me, maybe after the seminar, to explain more on that. Fat has two, fat has two, two point two, two point two five more of energy than carbohydrate. So every one gram of fat has more energy than milk. A gram made of 9 percent, 10 percent has three, three for three for kind of energy. But that of milk is uh, oil is 8,800. So that means by the time multiply 343 times 2.5 is almost 800. 
So the level of energy in fat is higher. The only there is no, you cannot get protein like the way you're getting it for energy. So fat freezes space in the formula. So by the time you're using fat, it freezes space in the formula. Increase density of the of the diet. That's another thing that people do in the hot weather. We do in the hot weather because we want the density of the diet. So we use fat to free the formula, to free space in the formula. Fat has also less heat increment than carbohydrate, therefore less heat produced production in hot weather. So fat slow. We want to discover that fat slow down the rate of feed passage in the GIT of the bird. So so more efficient digestion. Fat improve palatability. I've said that to us before. Then number three, I've said number one, two, three on feed and feed management. Feed will go from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. During this whole weather, there should be no feed. I'm not saying that you should feed around 8 to 1. I'm saying no, for that my statement. I say feed withdrawal from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you want to manage heat during this period, there should be no feed in the feeder. That's my point. From nine to four. They should, the bus should not have access to feed at all from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So for you to achieve that, that's why I say that farmer at this point in time, you should try to have light. If you don't have generator, go and put solar. So people are doing like that. You can go and get solar. That's so cheap. Panel solar, even the not, with one or two bulbs inside. Let the antenna feed by four or five a.m. If you feed by six, seven a.m., you have it problem. No to worry about it. Get that one. So feed, because if you, put, if you feed around six, seven o'clock, the feed will still be there after nine. That's my point. So feed withdrawal from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is very effective. We discovered that one for my 28 years in poultry business. This is very effective. It reduces heat stress mortality. Feed intake and digestion produ produce nearly 7% of additional heat in the body of a bird. That is, feed intake and digestion produce nearly 7% of additional heat in the body of the bird, which is maximum from 45, 45 hours after feed intake. What they are saying that we are, we are not looking at the, the feed they're eating, we are looking at the digestion of the feed. So if bird eat feed, by eight o'clock. So that means 45 hours of eight. That means the day will take place around 12 or one. And that's the time that the weather is too hot. Because if you look at the poultry from the crop down to the ileum, if a bus at eat feed, the feed spend 50 minutes in the crop. That crop you see, the feed will spend 50 minutes there. From that 50 minutes, it goes to prevent close and, and gives us. The feed will spend 70 minutes. From that place, the old name, where you have the loop, the feed will only spend five to eight minutes. But that place is loop where you have the pack place to increase the surface area. From that uh, the name, the feed will pass to ileum and, and uh, georgium, which is more than 120 minutes. So by the time you look at the distance, for example, the bird eats feed and goes the digestion properly, it takes 45 hours. So, and at that time, what is the digestion now? There should be increment in the body of the heat. That's why we are saying that. There should be no feed from 9 a.m. in the drinker, in the feeder. This should not coincide with the hottest part of the atmosphere that one. So, not, we also discover if by skin is poor on the farm, feed withdrawal may lead to coccidiosis or necrotic enteritis. So, that's not all. From my own observation, from my own, if you withdraw feed intake, if your basket is very poor, and you withdraw feed, you may have oxidosis or necrotic enteritis, especially in Burela. So that means for you to withdraw feed, you make sure your, your biosecurity is packed. Because if there are no feed in the GIT, you know, it's another topic on, the, on another day that I will not have time to explain. So make sure that what I'm saying that during this hot weather, your biosecurity should be standard. Standard, your biosecurity. Don't compromise biosecurity during this hot weather. That's the point I'm trying to say. And this is, a, this is a table I put. And with this feed you also, this is a ration you should feed. From that 45 a.m., feed one third of the daily feed. If you mistakenly feed too much of feed in the morning, the feed will remain till nine o'clock. So this is a formula I give it to in one tropic in Nigeria in the north. And for more than years, 
And farmers are even can know even that, and they appreciate me for this. It's not just textbook something. It's a research that we are giving free. So feed one third of the daily feed intake. If you feed two thirds, they will be feed to 10 o'clock. So feed one, this for layers, so not for bread or for layers. Feed one third of the daily feed intake, around four or five a.m. Then feed two thirds of the daily feed from four o'clock. So you, you, I will, because we have a Latin program from from uh, to nine, you can put I put nine. You suppose nine to two, sixteen to two because of the lighting program. You must get light. Go and look for solar. If you don't have light, or some of these things you cannot achieve it. So you have to do it. So this is two thirds. And sometimes even in normal situation, even during cool weather, it's not good to give too much of feed, too much of feed in the morning, practically. It's better to give two in the evening because when it's uh, it, it will explain it will take a lot of time. So maybe it's, we myself and family will will have a topic, maybe a webinar online on feed and feeding alone, so that I will not waste my time on this. Then I finish with feed and feeding. Then manage water source. Normal, the normal ratio of water to feed intake is two to one. That's normal, two to ratio one. But get changed four to one when temperature is above 27. So anytime temperature is above 27 on your farm, the, the bag then take four to one ratio one of one, ratio one, four to one. Bag drink four percent more water for every one degree increase in temperature above 27 degrees. So what I'm saying here is that I've gone to some farm, they have a mortality and they will record that it's heat, but it's not heat. Is because the birds are not get enough water. The birds are not get enough water. And if you are a farmer, always keep this record. You see, if people don't keep record, they just give water and give them. They don't even do research on the farm. They don't know. But then you see this thing, you even see this poultry is science. It's very, it's glary. You see it. So no matter of water to feed is two to one, but get change four to one when temperature is above twenty seven. And for that 27, but drink 4% more water for every one degree increase in temperature above 27. By the time the bird gets 28, more water. 29, more water. 30, more water. So how do you medicate now? That's the question I ask for people. How do you medicate? I go to a farm that is a lot of issues on farms. The agenda money are just doing nonsense. If temperature be increasing, maybe some medicating for five days. Maybe at day one, it's 27. And by the time the bus, maybe two days, 28, and the bus taking too much of drug, it becomes a problem for the bus. So it's another topic that we have to look at it in, it's a lot of topics. So provide plenty of fresh, clean, and cool drinking water. There are three things I put there. Plenty of fresh water, don't say because they are talking before plenty of provide plenty of fresh number one clean number two and cool drinking water during hot weather for flow rearing flock if you are flow on deeply the like boilers provide additional drinkers if you are racism you are using ten drinkers during this hot weather put fifteen or twenty please very important it's not for boiler. Don't use the same drinker. If it's Leo, the one you are using during hot weather, maybe in November, I'm at time, and still up to now, you are still making it no work. So we advise that for flow rearing flow, provide the additional drinker can help accommodate the increased water consumption. In fact, I was on a farm on Thursday, this Thursday, no water. The drinkers are empty. Uh -uh. One I call that was the problem. Ah, but we we'll give them, we have given them normal water they are taking before. You can see some of the some of the issues on the farm. The birds are just they, they, they are just throwing the you see water are just empty, they are just flowing about in the pen. Because the birds are taking 200 liters, they are getting 200 liters, they're not going to sit down. So please, for flow ready flow, provide the additional drinker can help accommodate the increased water consumption. Flush water line. Flush water from drinking line for two to three times in hot weather till the chill, chillness is filled on the palm of your hand. 
So we advise farmer that during this hot weather, especially from one, two, and three, flush away water, hot water. I will show you. Let me. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Then, number last one: regular sanitation and product cleaning of water line and tanks and flushing pump system with hydro care is very key. This is necessary because bacteria count in water increases during hot weather due to water table going down. So what we discover that because during hot weather, the level of water is going down. So as the water is going down, there's increase in level of bacteria count. And if your farm is hard water, it's even worse. Because the more the water is going down, the more the hardness is increasing. So you will see biofilm in your water because the calcium magnesium. So always flush your pipeline with hard work here. Please. Okay, this is, let me show this. Let me go like, let me go back to, okay. You see, this one was here. This is how you see. You must have, what I, this is the way we drain our water. We drain the water out. That's how we'll be draining the water out. We drain always, you can see. So this is how we'll be draining the water out. This is how we'll be draining. Let me go back to my slide. But I want to show you so I'll go back to my, sorry, I'll go back to my slide. We'll zoom it through. Okay, I can even do it like that, okay. So, flushing of water line, flushing of water line, for two, three times in hot weather is very key. So what we discover also is that, uh, what we discover that water, I'll, come to, I'll see explain later is that, you know the water is too hot, as the water is flowing, in the, if, the, if, the, if the pen is too long, as the water is flowing, it's also generating heat in the pipeline and it's stay there and the pipe will not drink. So what do you advise, it's not in hot weather, when it's too hot, like in the afternoon, you go and open the end, like this one, you open it, and you allow the, the water to flow out. You will be putting your, your, your hand, your palm there. And you see cool air coming in, you lock it back. But you see, so if your farm, there are some farmers, most of those people are even doing cages. They are even doing it wrongly in most farms. In fact, even in Southwest, in the North, go to 10 from today, you discover that. Out of 10, six farms, the public system are wrong. If it, any farm I go to farm, we keep on correcting, correcting. Because of the, the, those who are installing the, uh, the cages, they don't have all this in their mind. So you go to a farm, if your farm, if your cage, you don't have access to each pipe, each line to release water out, there's a problem on that farm. Honestly, there'll be a problem even in the future. Even biofilm, how do you even flush the water line? How do you even clean the water line? You ask yourself that question. So make sure that each line has its change independently at the end of the pipeline, independently. Probably I can release it out and wash it. Because some are joining, joining, go are joining together, join, join. How do you even flush the pipeline? Like we advise farmer, anytime you use antibiotic, you have to flush the antibiotic out because they are all other antibiotic vitamins you use in water they are sugar based and but they are like sugar so that way anytime you are doing medication after the five or three days three or five days uh, treatment you flush with hydrochia how will you flush it how do you flush it out it's a question so my dear father mother, look at you after the same now go to your farm if the outlet the water there's no way can release the water call plumber to come and change it your plumber so that each one you'll be able to release it out it helps a lot during hot weather. Because water is very important. The chicken and also the egg consist of nearly 70% of water. Whether the chicken or the egg is almost 70% of water. So if there's no water, you see mortality, you see crack, you see drop in production. So you need to make sure the water is clean. 
protect over a tank. You see, it's on farm. If your farm, your overhead tank, your black tank is outside, I pick that farm. I pick that farm. In fact, if your tank is even outside black, you may have a bacteria problem. Bacteria produced there. Black tank tend to absorb. It's a size. It's nothing. Black material tend to absorb heat. They even attract heat. White material reflects heat. So if your tank is black, the black tank we, 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 we attract heat even during rain season. And when there's heat, bacteria grow at high temperature. They grow. So but there will be, you see bacteria in your tank. You are even multiplying bacteria in your tank. You to use it so paint your tank white, like this one. These are big from in Lagos. These are this one that they paint white. They also cover it with tight. Just a way of providing cool water for the bad during hot weather. These are other farms. You can see the tank, how they invested and cover it with touch. You cannot even see the tank. And during hot weather, they are even pouring the water on the on top of the on that touch. So you can maintain cold and the block. See the block. This is a way to, to produce, to, to use cool water for your bad. This, this is a farm in Kaduna. You can see, you cannot even touch. It's very excellent. This, but once a farmer, you see tanks open, black tank, and they are professional there. They are professional. You see blood open there. I picked the such farm. And they're using drogo. They, most of them, there are the people that they, we are bringing drogo. Most of drogo we are importing, we are just bringing drogo to cover lapses of farmers. So a lot of farmers now, they have substitute management with use of antibiotics. We, we, are, we are the biggest importer of better drugs, but sometimes I'm not happy that farmers are using drugs. That's not our motto. And that's why we'll be training farmers how to even stop using of too much of antibiotics. A lot of farmers will call me. A lot of farmers will call me, Dr. Wagner, I want buy drugs from you. I'm buying plenty. So far, we'll make sure 50,000. We should resell them. They want to buy drugs for so like I get this car. I say, no, why should you even use drugs at the first instance? With 50,000, you don't even need drugs. I told them for And by the time we go to do training, they don't use drugs. But they use, if they don't use a product, antibiotic, we have supplement they can use. As a, I'm traveling now to know to train more than five farmers by next week. Big, big farms. Why? For them to stop using antibiotic. Because we say they are buying a lot of our antibiotic. We are not saying that we are happy that because they are buying from us. We are not even happy. So we have to, I have to fly to North now to go out. Why are they using antibiotic? It's not good. So that is our motto in Adamo. So cover your tank like this. If you can look at other one, they cover with juke bag. You can get it in the hot weather. Go and throw a juke bag and throw the tank. I'll be watching it to maintain cooler. This, this is the notice. You don't need an advanced technology. Juke, juke bag are the, the one they use for cocoa. They are like this one. They're all over. You, you cook leaves. Uh, you can see how they, this person does the juke bag. Cover your top of here, he, but it's still better than just opening it like that. And in this place, they keep on waiting. They they keep on waiting. They waiting. They just bag. Look at this one. This just how to reduce, how to provide cool water for the bag. You can also use ice block, but sometimes ice block human factor. I've seen a lot of farms. They run the problem because as they're using ice block, there's contamination with the hand. Some forget the line will go and block the the tank, no water. So they're going to help us. Then second, in the issue of water, bacteria grow much more rapidly in water life during hot weather. And that's why I told you that during hot weather, make sure to clean your water line regularly with hydrogen. Please, hydrogen peroxide. Bacteria grow much more rapidly in water life during hot weather. I want you to understand that statement. Bacteria grow much more rapidly in the water line during hot weather. Always treat and clean your water line with hydrochia or use caprophis or itraqua acid as, as desired to minimize microorganisms in the water and in the gut. So this is what we call intraqua acid is an acidifier. I know a lot of folks here that list me you may use acidifier. It's not a matter of marketing strategy. We have intraqua acid that contains uh, acidifier with chelated zinc and copper. No product in the world that have that combination. I stand corrected. 
So other than the yourself as the fire, as the fire, but our own contain, apart from as the fire, zinc and copper. And you know the function of zinc, even the COVID in human beings. You know the function of copper. So our as, as the fire stand out, nobody have it in Nigeria that time. And also if you're using uh, alcohol acid, you don't have test kit, like lithium test, don't use it. This is a PM strip, sorry, PM strip. Don't use it. And that's why we told our importer that, the product of that, uh, acid, that if you don't provide PM strip for pharma, we will not market it. So each of our intraqua acid contain two samples of uh, PM strip that's for use. Because when they use it, Intra, when you use acidifier, you want to achieve two things. You want to achieve the pH to be either 3.8 or 4. That's the pH. Because once you have to achieve pH 3.8 to 4, no bacteria can survive. So if you're using acidifier and you're not checking the pH strip, and maybe the pH is 7, clotrimo can, clotrimo can still survive, but equally will not survive. And if you use the intra, intra, any acidifier, without using pH strip and the pH go below 3.8, the bug will not be able to leave the water because it's too acidic and if you burn the tongue, potential will crash. So that's why sometimes it's professionally, but our own, like I said, each container, it comes with pH strip free. We do this professionally. And if the only acidifier, go and check any acidifier you're using on the farm, it doesn't contain certain zinc and copper. Look, look at those that are uh, issue of how hot water, how hot weather promote bacteria. This is also a site. You can do it on your farm. So that was most of our farm managers of Vizor, they don't sit down and do the work properly. At least if they are supposed on your farm for two years, three years on your farm, you're supposed to have data on your farm, not just go come, come, come. You're supposed to have data. This will do it. This is my, this is what we discover. Temperature drinking water in poultry. This is like cages now. This is for flow cages. Like this, these are nipples. These are nipples. These are nipples. This is your water source, maybe from the tank. By the time it comes here, where you are, you go the maybe tank inside there, maybe temperature is 18 in the water. The first nipple water will enter. The first side, the water will enter. The temperature goes to 22. By middle, it will be 26. At the end, 34. So inside, you have to know now at the back of your mind that if where your water supply is coming into the, into the pipeline, the temperature of the water at the end is always higher. The temperature of the water inside the pipeline is always higher than the temperature of the water at the beginning of the pipeline, which is another one and the middle. So you can test this water. You can fetch water and test it. You just, so you find out that most of the bacteria is due to hot weather, is being produced at the end of the nipple because that's why you have the water pH is very high as bacteria like pH. Water to be too hot, they multiply too fast, like I said before. So always flush the water out. That's what I say. Always flushing the water out so that you allow this water water to go out. So that's why I say that in, inside your inside your farm, the half side of your pen is all the infectious hazard area. So anytime you hold it now, the end of your farm is hazard infectious area. You know, the beginning is infectious safe area. The beginning of the, the why it started is infectious, maybe risk area. So please let us know that at the back of our mind. And these are the products we are talking about. We have intra-aqua acid, hydrochia for cleaning the water line. It's just hydrogen oxide from silver. It's just 50%. The one they use the most to clean wood is 10%. And you can see how when you clean the wound, you can see if you use the children dirty, the moment you apply 10%, look at how if it remove the whole dirty. So this one 50%. Though it's corrosive, if you touch your hand, it's burning your hand, but it's safe for the birds and the human because the moment you apply into the pipeline, it releases oxygen and water, which is safe. It's a bubble of the oxygen that removes the biofilm. And this is the intraqua acid we are talking about. Then that is for water management. Then there's also other management that you can use to relieve heat. Avoid excessive activity during the hottest part of the day. So you need to work together. Avoid debating during the hottest part of the day. Avoid vaccination 
you hold part of the day. Avoid transferring you hold part of the day. Whatever activities you want to do now, don't do it. Do it in the night. Then the hot weather is a great stress on the bus. So avoid bothering, bothering and disturbing the bus during period of peak heat. Adjust your schedule so that routine work is done early in the morning or in the night. So don't do work, no work in the afternoon. So it's better you pay your pay your staff to do the work in the night. Use caution when water vaccinating a flow during hot weather. Because we not be very careful when water vaccination vaccinating a flow during hot weather. Do not withhold water, drinking water for long from the flock during hot weather. Because of the water, they withdraw water. So sometimes you cannot even get the vaccination. Because, like I told you before, the way the two to one is ratio of normal, but when the temperature goes up, it's four to one. Uh, that, but after 27 degrees centigrade, they will be by four percent. So maybe if the temperature is 30 now, or 35, or maybe 36, the by the time we touch them. There will be problem on them. And by the time you don't want to come and vaccinate, you rush the water. So you have to be very careful. They do not use makeup, but there's a lot of oxygen drug we now saw in the market. Sometimes you have to be very careful. You have to know what type of drug to use, oxygen drug to use in hot weather, as it increases heat stress induced mortality. There are some oxygen drugs like nicabazine. Anytime you see combination of nicabazine, it's actually great. Don't use it during hot weather. Because those at the drug, they can increase heat stress induced mortality. That's what we discover. But sometimes farmer will not know that to happen. Then during stress, the villa has shortened, which leads to less absorption of surface area and results in reduced nutrient absorption. So we, we suggest that you supplement with temporal feed or intraqua acid in water to stimulate the villa growth and serve as primary energy source. For intestinal work, because the capro fish is an essential oil, so it serves as an energy to the bacterial cell. In Brella, for that I have Brella, uh, because most of the people are layer. So for Brella, how the history management is like, how to achieve the body weight of 2 kg in 40, 42 days, the feed intake needs to be near standard on day to day basis. So we make sure that the feed intake is not reduced by applying some of the formula I give, but in addition, reducing shade temperature for Brella. Reduce stock density. If in one pen before you are using 10,000, please put 8,000. Modify feeding practice. There's a modified feeding practice for Brella. Maybe we'll do a discussion, we'll talk about it. Then supply cold drinking water 24 hours. Then improve air movement at bad level in Brella. Very important. Then the last one, the feed supplement that you can use, water supplement. You know, sometimes they, they tend to help in heat stress recovery. And we have some product they can use. I've talked about vitamin stress oral. It's a good neutral life. It has good vitamin and very good amino acid. And I stand to be corrected this afternoon is that it's the best and the most reliable vitamin in Nigeria market. And why I say that is that, because in veterinary preparation, they what you call veterinary preparation, they what you call human preparation. The Kepro that's producing this vitamin oral, they are using human preparation. What it means that at any time, Kepro wants to stop producing vitamin oral, they can use their life to produce human preparation. So that means they have to maintain the standard. And that's why vitamin oral is the most selling vitamin in Nigeria market. It's not a show price. So if you're a farmer, you go to start pricing uh, this and this, it's your own, your own. Then we have the Pro Plus, I will explain that one. Then we have vitamin E plus selenium plus vitamin C. A lot of farmers are using vitamin C, vitamin C. But I can tell you today that you need vitamin C, vitamin C. E and selenium. These are three powerful antioxidants for heat stress. Vitamin C is only one. But selenium can even help to recover inflammation. Remove radicals, powerful antioxidants. So that way we decide to bring this one. Even for example, buy vitamin, vitamin C. We decide to bring 
vitamin E, chlorosalinium, and vitamin E. It's not that resistant. And it's because selenium is the best, you can, we have some professional here, is the best supplement that is used for his stress, that is vitamin C. And it has low inclusion rate. The feed grade of selenium used 50 gram per ton, only 50 gram per ton. So and that's what this sachet is, one sachet, general dose, one sachet will produce 1,600 liters. But we recommend that for poultry in this hot weather and for breeders, use one sachet to 800 liters of water. So one sachet will go to 800 liters of water. It's the most cheapest, very cheap, and very effective. Why are we talking of liver tonic? I want us to look at it as, if you, as a farmer, and all of us agree, you find out that during hot weather, and some of us are living, they will agree with me. And that's what I've been, I've been observing for long. During hot weather, the birds don't eat much, but they have fat. You will now ask yourself, how come these birds are not eating much, but they are still having fat? I know the farmers that are listening to me this afternoon will agree with me. So we now find out that two things are happening. When it comes to lipid metabolism in the liver, heat stress induces lipogenesis. That's the scientist of the lipid. If there is heat stress in, in, in poultry, it induces the synthesis of lipids. And it inhibits lipolysis, that's the breakdown of fat, leading to accumulation of fat in the body of the bird. So what means that there is also called lipogenesis and lipolysis that happen at the same time. And that one, one it increases and then it's inhibited at the same time. So you know there is fat in the body of the body. Not that they eat too much, but you see fat. So that's why you need also liver tonic, not only vitamin C, or you have to study your condition or intermittently giving them, but you can mix the uh, hyperol and bacterial oral, or you can mix hyperol, vitamin E, selenium, and together you give. So that, that liver tonic, hyperol, is a liver tonic that cannot start stabilizing the liver due to stress, stabilizing the liver, stabilizing the liver, stabilizing the liver, because it's a key organ in the body. And if you look at it, is that liver is very important in poultry. And I put here that liver is an important organ responsible to manage more than 500 functions. That's what we discover. Liver in poultry manage more than 500 functions. And all the metabolic reactions inside the body of birds, either umbrella or layer, is directly or indirectly linked with the liver. So you find out that, oh, sorry. You find out that, oh, I want to remove this, okay. You find out that liver work as storekeeper, transport manager, and a police. That's the function of liver in, in, in the human being. So the liver act as store, storekeeper, they store feed, they store all the fat, protein in the body of the human being, and they transport nutrients in the liver, and they also police. They fight against infection. If there's macrotoxicosis now, the first organ you see is liver. If the liver is infected, macrotoxicosis, because it's fighting it. And that's why you keep the liver, especially if you have stress, always give the liver tonic, the poroplos, poroplos, it will help a lot. It help a lot. Why is it not changing? Okay, sorry. Like I said before, optimal liver function is a way of feed in the hot weather. So good body weight umbrella, better liver protection during high demanding period. So you need liver tonic like hyperoplos to work during this heat stress. And if you look at it, those that have layers, if you don't know today, let me say it. Maintain your lay your hands capital. What are your hands capital? Is the liver. If you want to get high production, because all the yolk, all the yolk I see is the liver that produces it. It's the liver that produces the yolk, no other organ I get. It's the liver that produces yolk. And part of albumin is liver. And the shell of the egg, the vitamin is out to be how to pass through the liver. So that was it. The liver has more than 500 functions, more than 500. 
And it also found that anytime you're doing PM or you're opening a bag, the first organ you see is the liver. So God has made us know that liver is very important. So for egg production, for egg shell quality, it's very to reduce what heat stress. Even though at any time, please, I will advise always use the propolis to maintain your production. You don't wait till, okay, when you have uh, fat, prolapse, you go for liver. No, at any time, your body is stable, you can just use liver tonic for them to stabilize the liver because it's a key organ in the poultry. After use of vitamins and electrolytes, supplement the drinking water to replenish the loss of sodium chloride. I've said that one before. I've explained on vitamin trace oral and adrenaline. I've explained on uh, vitamin E selenium, it's an antioxidant, contribute integrity of the epithelial cells, increase feeding check, improve the immune system. It captures and neutralizes free radical, especially selenium, and the dosage is one gram to eight to eight liters. And use of also use of essential oil, especially in brillant the whole period, is also good to leave its stress. It's very umbrella, even layer. But sometimes in layer because of the humidity, sometimes we lay we, we wanted to spray it. You have not this way to spray the bag. It gives the sensation of the heat stress. Umbrella you give the in drink of water is a natural product because once we give essential oil, that's eucalyptus and menthol, it will leave the little sensation and they're able to relieve the heat. So, and also if they, if, like those that have brella, you have CRD, it's easier for you to go and take the load of, before they come out CRD, we advise that we keep it mental food, mental food. Because like I used to say in my training, if you look at the genetic of those brella now, with 3.5 kg feet, they get two kg within 40 days. So that means they have worked on the, like in those years, that before you can get that two kg till eight weeks, nine weeks. Now they have a genetic. And they are, the scientists have worked on all the muscles, the bone. The only organ that they could not work on is the leaf, the lungs, because the lung of the bird ain't in our value. That's why they cannot expand it. And that's the reason that Brella is having CRD, because the weight is too much on the lungs. That's why they always come down. That's the reason that Brella is coming down with CRD. So that's why you need to give mental force, mental force to leave the lungs so that they can perform very well. Caprolite is indicated for prevention and treatment of heat stress and dehydration in place and umbrella. Those that are taking day old chicks, this one is specifically for day old chicks. But you can give for layers because it can take the mineral everything or umbrella or umbrella. But this is specifically for young chicks. You don't go and look for glucose. Like now, if you are transporting, if you are getting day old chicks now, they are transporting it for long distance. They will be dehydrated because of the heat, hot weather. So we advise you use caprolite. Caprolite contains essential amino acid, essential minerals meant for the old things. And also it has glucose inside. And it also contains glycine, specific protein for chips that help to grow the GIT of the bag for optimal uptake, it's very umbrella. So these are the vitamins that specifically for broody, for really caprolite. And it has been registered with NABDAC and it, we have it all over. So protect your bag now from his stress with, with what I have said, and then smile to the bank. Thank you all for listening for the little I have gave you. So thank you all. And this is Dr. James Babawa Getty. You can reach me on 0802314536 or 0806893424, or you can email me about it at yahoo.com. The two lines are on WhatsApp. The two lines, they are on WhatsApp. So thank you all for listening. So Dr. Demi, it's over to you. Dr. All right, Demi. so we, okay, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. All right, so you all agree with me that it's been a full day. Uh, if you if you don't permit, sir, uh, Dr. Wageti, I would like to take uh, two or three questions. Uh, so if you have a question, uh, I know the more of the comments I'm seeing is that uh, people want uh, a copy of the lecture. Uh, but as you must have noticed, uh, we are also airing live on our YouTube channel. Good. So if you go on Farmalat, uh, Farmalat,
type in Pam Alad and subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be able to watch uh, the recordings of uh, this entire program. Uh, so the recordings are always available if you subscribe on our YouTube channel. But let me take two or three questions before we allow Dr. James Baba Wagetti uh, to leave. Uh, it's been an extensive class. So how will you uh, state your question? It's that uh, I will be going through the chat uh, uh, busting now. And if you have any question, I'm going to be picking the two, uh, uh, the two questions that are closer to what we can handle here and now. So please type your questions on the chat uh, 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 box. So Dr. James, somebody's asking, what categorically is the dosage of hydrocare? Can you quickly answer that? Yeah, uh, that, that's good. You know, like I said, hydrocare, if you are using for if you are, if you are using hydro care for, for only sanitizing the water, you use 50 mil to 1,000 liters of water just for sanitizing throughout the day. But if you are using hydro care for cleaning your pipeline, you use 100 mil to 1,000 liters of water. And this is how we use it. You, you apply the hydro care towards closing because the hydro care need what we call with holding period of 45 hours. So when you are closing to a symphony, you make sure you medicate, you, you, you medicate your water with hydrocare and go. The person can still drink water, there's no problem because it's, the hydrocare H2O2 is H2O2. That means by the time you enter water, it liberates oxygen and water, which is safe for the bird. It is the bubbling of the oxygen that removes the bird. You know, like if you apply on the wound in the hospital, you see bubbling. It is the only that bubbling on the wound that removes the dirty. So the bird is safe. But by the time you are doing, whether you are doing a lighting program or you up by six, seven o'clock, at that time the birds are not drinking the water. So that time the hydro is the pipeline is static. So that time the hydro care will now be the the, the, the oxygen will now be removing the biofilm. And then they we have silver, 300 milligram, milligram silver inside. The purpose of that silver is just stabilize the bubbling to the end of the pipeline. So that some they may have a long pipeline. I know the problem of the oxygen, if you don't have stabilizer, it may stop at the end of the middle of the, uh, the, of the pipeline. So you need a powerful stabilizer. That's why we are using silver to stabilize properly the oxygen to the end of the pipeline. And also the silver is meant to, it's a powerful disinfectant. They can also kill any organism that the hydrocarbon must have, the oxygen must have blown. So that's, that's what to do. But early in the morning, very early in the morning, you know, the, the oxygen will only dislodge the biofilm, but cannot remove it out of, the, out of the pipeline. So it's the duty of the farmer to make sure to, early in the morning, to flush out the data that has been removed by, by the hydro care. If you don't flush it out, that by gravitation, those dirty biofilm will settle along the pipeline and will block your nipple. So anytime you're using hydrogen, if, if you have not used hydrogen for a while before, hydrogen care, you have not used it before, this is your first time, make sure you flush it very early in the morning. But subsequent to one, the hydrogen must have removed dirty out. And we also tell farmer now is that, please, my dear farmer, know the nature of your water. Is it the water you are giving to your bath? Is it hard water or soft water? If you don't know, you are running the farm blindly. Because if your water is hard, you'll be using antibiotic. Any farm that, apart from bad management, if your management is good, if your water is hard, you'll be, you'll be always using drug. Because the, it's a science, it's very easy. If the water is hard, that means that you have many minerals inside. You have magnesium, you have calcium, you have iron. And those minerals inside the water, they tend to deposit in the pipeline and form biofilm easily, and that oil bacteria is also high. And apart from that, when there is, your water is hard, that means the pH will be high. And when the pH is very high, bacteria multiply easily in the water. But if your water is soft, you don't have issues. And that way, if your water is hard, we tell the farmer to, to wash his pipeline, to use hydro care twice in a week. But if your water is soft, you can use hydro care once in a week or twice in a week. Please. And if you have hard water also on your farm, if your water is hard on the farm also, there is tendency that some drug will not work, but you don't know. You may go, you may have a problem, you may go to the lab and, and they have been drug sensitive tests, and maybe they now say it's flumequine or erythrocyte or OTC or cyclic, go and use. If your water is hard, 
those drugs will not, you may not see effectiveness on the farm. Because those minerals in the GIT of the bath, the water, you know, the, the body will drink water, those calcium and magnesium will bind to the antibiotic and it will not be absorbed for GIT. But if this, that was that you have to know hardness of the water. If it is a mold that you use quinolium derivative like OTC or erophosine, then you can now we tell you to go and buy citrus, citric acid and mix with the antibiotic and give the bath so that the iron will, will now bind the citric acid and leave the, the antibiotic to work. So protein becomes so technical and so scientific. So that we know wrong it lost. I think I have another question. Thank you. Hello, All right, thank me. you so much. Yes, thank yeah. you so much, uh, Dr. James uh, Baba Wagetti. Yeah, I will welcome. take a few more comments. Somebody said, uh, never a dull moment with Dr. Wagetti. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. I have a question. He said, how come, how, how, how do I know my cheeks are heat shrinking? I will advise you to watch uh, the replay on our YouTube channel. I think Dr. Good. Baba Wagetti has dealt extensively with that. Uh, so somebody is saying that can I mix hydrocare with other antibiotics? No, no, you can't. If, if you mix hydrocare oh. with antibiotics, it will be coagulated. It will be coagulated because it is it, still as if it's a dirty in the pipeline. And now what we, we tell you before that if you use drug or vitamin, the more free treatment, use hydrocare to force it out. Thank you. I think I've that one. All right. All right, so uh, again, uh, just as a way of announcing, you can invariably just drop your email in the chat box if you have not, uh, so that if we have more materials, we can send them to you via email. Somebody's asking, how often can we administer heparol liver tonic for layer beds during their life cycle? Can it be monthly or every six weeks? Or can the usage be based on outcome of serum monitoring? No, you cannot do it. So it's, not, it's, not, it's not antibiotic that you can do. So let me tell you that. You, like, let me give you a case of our farm. How we are using, uh, these are supplements. They are not drug. But just add in giving your bad performance. One, if you notice that it's too fat, the fact that it's too fatty, we have, and even there are problems, you can use uh, hyperopolis at that point in time. That's number one. Second, if you know that your project is going down for no apparent reason, you can also, because you know that liver has so many functions in the body of the bird, you can also give the hyperoplos to boost your production. Because as I said before, the yolk is being produced by the liver. No one organ again. It's only the liver that produces the yolk. And the, if you want the size of the yolk, it's time you have to work on the liver. So you use that one. If you know the size and the production is not okay, and you have done everything, use. If you have macrotosis, if you are suspecting macrotosis, you know the first organ that we attack is the liver. You try to stabilize the liver to overcome the macrotosis before you now know how to treat it and remove the source of the macrotosis. For there are even some farms, they have even marriage issue, and they are still keeping them. At that point, is that you have to be giving liver tonic occasionally because the liver is being compromised at that point in time. So you keep on giving liver tonic at this point in time. Do you reach stress like this? You know, we have so many things here. You know, the, the manage is stress. There is no one factor. It's many factors that you bring it together, like the design of the house, like the uh, using, if you're in the north, using foga. If you are in the southwest, in the night, using, try to use a fan. These are things that you, so many things. They use supplement, like I've, like I've said, so, then, so there are so many things, but the, the hyperoplos, you look at the situation you are looking at, and it's a hand capital. And if you are bad, even performing at peak. If they are performing at peak, you need to even give hyperoplos. You need to give hyperoplos, you don't want the thing to drop down. Thank you. I'll be still running out of network, oh, light is off. Tell me, can you hear me? Okay, okay. Oh. My, okay, my yes, life I can is, hear you. The Nepal so, has gone out here. My network will go out because my, my data is... Okay, no, we're we already, we we already, we already thanking you. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all is to thank all participants. Uh, we discovered that all of you stayed from the beginning uh, to the end of uh, the class. That's something we really love. 
and then it's also a sign that you're getting value from what uh, uh, Dr. James Babawagetti has been sharing. We'd like you to, if you've not subscribed to Farmalad YouTube channel, to just go on your chat box and click the button and subscribe because at that place, you'll be able to get to watch the replay uh, from start to finish and equally share with your farm hands or farm manager and the likes. We also have other materials that we can also email you that can help out in your farm processes. So if you've not uh, sent in your email, I believe you can uh, do that. Uh, Dr. Wagetti, we also have other questions, but they are not directly uh, related to this. Uh, so we know that as the time progresses, you will oblige us the opportunity of also learning okay. more. Yeah, the light is bad. Because somebody, they yeah, are all oh, my life. They are all my neighbor. Was, oh. They are all my generation. Oh, fantastic. Okay, somebody was asking uh, uh, some questions like how to manage the outbreak of uh, Newcastle. I see other ones asking, please, what's the best, using nipple drinkers or deep open water? I don't know whether it's questions you want to attend to, wait, wait, but I think this wait. is what I want you to talk about quickly. Okay. Is somebody wait. is asking what other alternative? What other alternative do you have for farms that are small? and cannot afford some of these options financially. So go ahead and uh, make a comment I around think I, the three. I, I think you ask, question, you, you ask question on Newcastle, I mean, let me, I want to hear yes. the, the Yes, I, what, I did. What was the question on Newcastle? No, the person is asking, how, how, how do you manage an outbreak uh, of Newcastle? Well, uh, first of all, the, it's an easy work for how to manage outbreak of Newcastle. First of all, you you have to, first of all they're gonna know that it's actual it's actual Newcastle, first of all. So that you know because some signs there are some diseases that show similar signs to Newcastle. So that was they were called differential diagnosis. You, you need to call a professional aid or you go to lab to confirm that it is Newcastle. If you now confirm that it's Newcastle, I think the the only way is to vaccinate the bad against. Newcastle. I think that's the what how to prevent Newcastle is another different angle. One, strict by security. Second, make sure that the litter on your farm shall not be close to your pen. Any farm that have litter around the farm cannot go out with Newcastle. Any farm that you can, if you stay in your pen, you see the litter, you cannot run away from Newcastle. So make sure that you evacuate all litter far away from farm because you have been giving and also this vaccination of giving a sort of every four four eight weeks is not ideal it's wrong i'm saying publicly but farmers are already used to that we need to change that concept concept because giving a sort of every week every four four weeks or every eight, eight weeks as far as i'm concerned is not ideal it's not ideal we need to sit down and change and i i have a program that I use against Newcastle, I can share it. And many farmers uh, use it and they get the result. Many farmers, even Abuja, they use it. But I used to tell them one by one, I know that I didn't come out and say publicly. First of all, if you look at this Newcastle, if they are live vaccine, Newcastle, I want you to understand that if you are giving every four, four weeks, at the time you are giving Lasota to your bird, any bird that the tata is high and you give the sota, it exposes them to Newcastle again. It will mop up the immunity, so they become zero. But those birds that the Newcastle, the tata is low, it brings them up. So at any point in time, you'll be having zigzag of uh, tata in your pen. And the more you are giving the sota on your farm, because vaccine, the more the pressure of Newcastle on your farm. That means you are increasing pressure, pressure, pressure of Newcastle. So what I adopted, of which I'll be using on a farm and I apply to people. You cannot see the textbook. It's just a mindset thinking. We have to think out of the box, box, and see how things can, can, can go. On the way I do for many farms, and I get it is that you do your own, do your own vaccination program the way you have been doing. But when you come to 15, 16 weeks, you give three in one. If you give three in one, the next time you'll be given a regular sort of is when the birds are 28, 29, 30 weeks. Because that three in one, if you are giving it very well without stress, 
is supposed to maintain them for three months, that is up to 30, 20, 30, 30 weeks. So at that time, you can go to the lab, check data, or look for veterinarian to show that, okay, there's Newcastle. Because if Newcastle is coming and there are layers, it will show you signs. It will come in different forms. But most of us, they are called professional blindness. We don't know. It will give you different, more than eight signs that they are coming for Newcastle will come. But I'm not going to that one here now. You can get a professional vet that will come into your farm or go to lab. Well, after that three or well, 50 weeks, once they have confirmed that the bus, the data is low, bring your Lasota to the bus. After two weeks, bring your, bring your oil vaccine. That's two in one. Maybe you give the ND plus IB live. After two weeks, bring your, uh, bring your uh, two in one live uh, uh, oil. You wait for that three or four months again. You keep on putting. So you don't discover that. At the, at the circle of the bag, you may end up giving two Lasota, two, two Lasota, maybe three Lasota, three, three in one, two at the last of the bag. So that one will be adopted. Even as I'm talking now, one of the farm, Ojoba in Abuja, she has given Lasota like that, but we have changed it. And, and the last time, when they first give three in one, it was in about four months. And after the, the, the data is still very high. So I told them that I synchronize all the farm. First of all, I secure the farm. I said, give them, give them a and uh, give them a and I be all of them. I will now brought in after two weeks. I brought in uh, two two in one oil, and that's from now for four months. The issue of four, four weeks have stopped, but you have to get a good staff. That's the only boat there. That's the only on the boat in that way. If you don't have a good staff, they may end up damaging the leg during injection. You may have, you have paralysis, you have drop in production. But if you have a good staff, you will only see a drop in production. So, like in Ojo, I'm not talking about our farm, other farm, I'm not giving the latest customer that joined my Bogia program. Four months now, so that they give three in one. So, by doing like that now, you are even reducing the pressure of even Newcastle on your farm systematically. Systematically. So, whether you have 200 baht, you have 500 baht. Call a veterinarian to come and adopt this system. I'm telling you, you will not have a problem. You can have gone, but make sure you're little. But don't for four weeks, you are giving us water. Stop it. It's not working. So, if you want to want more information on that, you have my number. My people number, I might even call me and I will. We can test. If you have main pen, you can test from one pen and you see the result. So, you do the vaccination in the night, gently. Get to the two, two in one oil. We have. La Provet is there to your oil. La Provet from France. If you don't, if you don't trust the vaccine, we can even fly in the vaccine for you. Like that of Ojeba, I fly in the vaccine for her. I fly, I fly the two years for La Provet or safer. And for four, for four, four months now, she come here, the, the, the bad has been doing well. They don't see any casino. He's only giving six weeks before. Four months now, they didn't give anything. But I told her that even though you didn't see sign, let, let's, this is four months now, let's give the Lasota and give two in one again, so that it will protect them as in this heat. Because if they are heat now, they are telling them because they come. I just send a tight knife of the two in one to give. So that's how to go with the That's how to remove the water in Nigeria. I think I've answered you, tell me on that. But I can yeah, tell you, uh, any form that's giving for four weeks, six weeks, they don't know anything. And I stand to be corrected. We need to change some things in Nigeria. We need to come together. We farmers need to come together. And stop this rubbish we are doing on our farm. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. James uh, Baba Wagati. Uh, finally, 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 I just want you to quickly talk on this. Please, doctor, I want you to stress more about the feeding timing during his period. Just a summary of what you said. So what are the feeding timing for farmers? And then we can now uh, call it a day. Like, like I, I said before, I think this is a feeding time. Feed withdrawal. You know, we have on feeding, we, we have three things. I said three things the farmer must consider. One, feed with reduced protein. Second, reduce the use of cereal grain as a major source of energy. Then the third, the feeding withdrawal from feeding withdrawal period from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm not saying that you should feed around 8 or 7 or 9, but anytime from 9 to 4, no single feed in the feeder. 
That's the point I'm saying. No single feed in the feeder because this is very, this is very effective. Okay, let me even use this one. Sorry, tell me. This is feed withdrawal from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is very effective. It reduces heat stress. Because look at my senses. It's not these are things I've been doing for years. As far back as 1994, I've been working on that. It's not textbook, it's not textbook. I've been doing data, I've been keeping data all this way. So this is very effective in reducing heat stress mortality. No production. Get that my point. Heat stress mortality. So feed intake and digestion. There are two things now. We discover that feed intake and feed digestion produce nearly 7% additional heat in the body of the bird, which is maximum 45 hours after feed intake. This shall not concern the quarter part of the day, that's 2 to 3 p.m. If your farm still eating, taking feed around 8, around 9, that means digestion will take place around 2 and 3, because I've told you that from if the bird pig feed, the feed spent 50 minutes in the crop, in the crop. Then after 50 minutes, the feed passed to proventriculus and give it. It spent 70 minutes. So 50 plus 70 minutes, they have okay, one hour plus. Then it moved to Georgino. It spent 50 cc. That Georgino, you have the loop, you have pancreas. They go and make that because there is a loop to increase, to increase observation area. Then the ileum, one change. So you find out that for that, it's almost three to four hours for the gestion. So it now found out that about seven percent additional heat increment in the body of the bird. So if the bird don't have feed, no feed from night for air, they will not eat. They will drink water. So there's no additional heat. You have removed additional heat in the bird. But I discover that. If your basket is poor, don't do it. Don't do not feed with lower. There's a board there. Don't say that uh, this is what I do and I have a mortality too, because this is very effective in reducing mortality. So that you don't come out with that and now call me back. If your basket is very poor, feed with lower may lead to coccidiosis and nicotic interactive. So make sure that your basket is up. The birds are okay. And you have you must have light. If you don't have light, you're not be able to do this thing. You have to feed 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I know many farms now, even in the southwest, they feed. I know some of us are listening. They feed 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So that by 8 o'clock, no feed in the feeder. And that's why I also put that. For you to achieve that also, is that you use only one third of the feed they consume a day, feed around 4 or 5. Only one third. Don't feed two thirds. If you feed to that, they still be feed around 9, 9 a.m., which is not correct. So feed to that, one third of the feed in the morning, and to that of the feed from 4 o'clock to 9. That time you offer your lighting, your lighting program. If you don't have light and you feed to that, the bus will not be finished the feed also. So there are two things. So you must, that way, if you have five, 500 bars, you have 200 bars, don't say that you don't have generator. Go and buy solar. Many people are doing like that. Even I ship here. Well, there is solar now. Since I make it easier, if you go to Alaba, you have panel, a solar panel, just one can power the 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 bus. You can even program it myself. If it has some solar, you can even program it. You will, you will, you will not be there. Once the seven o'clock, the solar will just went off. It has a programmer there. So things are not easy. We have to think out of the box. Out of the box. Whether you have 100 or 200 but though. Poultry business now is like semi in, in his open address. Farmers are not getting it. We are complaining of high cost of raw material. And raw material will still go up now. With all these fights between Russia and Ukraine, they're going to be scarce of raw material. Thank God the government banned foreigners to come and buy it directly because they know what's going to happen. If not, people will just ship mess abroad because Ukraine are the largest producer of wheat in the world. Now there'll be no wheat. So they're going to be crisis. Russia, they are the biggest producer of oil, no oil. So people will not be using, some people will not be using mess to produce oil, to produce gas. So we have to prepare, some have to prepare for higher increase in, in raw material. And we have to work hard to increase our, you know, the industry is going to, I'm seeing crisis in the industry. Now we have AI everywhere. 
So I want to, if this fight continue, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of the political industry, but we have to work hard to close all the leakages. Leakages that have been possible. There are a lot of leakages. People, what farmers are losing is more than what they think that they are losing, what they are, they are losing in the prices. They are what you call hidden loss. You can go and look, you can go and watch my, my, my webinar with Auguste. Please go away. He didn't lose in poultry business. He didn't lose. By the time you go and look at that, watch that one, you understand that you are losing millions, but you don't know. So that's on the feeding. So feed, even on our farm before, right from the time, right from the beginning, for 26 years or 28 years, I used whether in rain season or this, I feed small in the morning than afternoon because to get good egg, to get good calcium. Is that I'm a crack? Is that this? There's many factors to it, but I don't have time to discuss on that one. So I hope I've explained very well. So please let us think out of the box. Go and get solar. Put it on farm. Program it. Nine o'clock it's off. It comes back by itself. It off. It is the solar I'm using in the back, back of my house. My house. I discovered that the scheduler in my house is halogen gas. It's consuming my 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 card. So I have to go to Alaba and bought a, I, I bought a solar and I program it by seven o'clock, seven thirty, light will come off. By seven o'clock, six thirty, light will go off. So the same thing you can go and buy and fix it. It's an investment. So we should think out of the box. And if it does a manager now, there are some owner of a farm, supervisor, as the way we're in heat now. What's the problem? But I don't need heat. They are not fit to be a manager, or we are not fit to be in the poultry business. Because as I'm talking to you now, some farmers have already programmed on that with, with your handset. They already know what the temperature is going to be in the next one month, what the humidity is going to be in the next one month on their farm. They already program the, they already know the temperature. So science has gone far with your handset. You can on your farm, you can know what the temperature from now to April. You even know it. What the humidity on your farm. So that you can work against it. You don't wait till when the heat comes, you now work. That is the Mumu person. Science is key in poultry business. Science. I'm consulting for many farms in the north now. As I'm talking to you now, more than 20 farms in the north. I'm in Lagos. I'm in, in Lagos. But I want to give them grants to watch on their farm. I've sent to them with my email. I'm in Lagos. But I Google I'm like I'm on their farm. I want to tell them that what the temperature is going to be on the farm are so, 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 so there. So before so so they let them do this one, they should not wait till they want the temperature come before they will have the temperature. That's how to go in the poultry business. So thank you, uh, Femi. Wow, wow, Dr. James of our get it's been an awesome, awesome, really, really a very awesome time. All right, so brief, uh, we're, we're, we're rounding up now. Uh, so Farmer Lab is partnering with Adamo to ensure appropriate farmers' education. You know, I've put up our YouTube uh, channel link for you to subscribe. We are going to be having more of this engagement with uh, Adamo to see how every farmer in Nigeria and across West Africa can have the best uh, information here. I'm going to be unmuting all of us. Uh, I'm going to be lifting up the uh, unmute button. Uh, but again, before I do that, I want to thank every one of us for staying till the end. We had maximum participation uh, from every one of you. And uh, we know that the reason why you stayed to the end is because you found value in what Dr. James Babawagete has been saying. Uh, Adamo has been at the forefront of leading innovation and then uh, farmers' education in Nigeria. And of course, I've been bringing up several solutions to help farmers. We want you to stay very closely uh, with us in the community and see how best we can all help every one of you. Uh, so from, uh, from us in Farmalab, we thank you. And then, I don't know, Dr. James, do you want to say a final word? Uh, well, or any farmer all, here wants to say well, let me, let me a final word? Final okay, go ahead, word. Dr. James. Well, first of all, I want to appreciate Dr. Femi. He's a young veterinarian, and he's a promising veterinarian. He's a digital veterinarian. <laughs> He's the MD of Farm Alert. Uh, he's also the youngest veterinarian in Nigeria as a part of member of the VCN. He was one time the MBMA Kogi chairman, and from that, this turned out every state that holds it, they are looking at a Farm Alert. 
And there's one thing, there's one thing that he failed to mention. Farmer mm -hmm. has an academy in a, in a vigilante, of which are training farmer, they have an academy. You can contact him, maybe you can try to share your uh, phone number. Anybody that wants to train, I think he's training farmer, he has a lecturer. Sometimes they use call me to come and train farmer, some call for, uh, from mm -hmm. even abroad, like the Kenya, they come and train farmer. So I'll be doing very good. And that's why at the moment we are we are a leader in the industry and uh, we don't mind, we don't look at your age, but your value. So uh, we see value in the uh, farmer life, and that's why we are always calling him. Not that the more cannot work, but we, we are working with people that uh, that have focus, that have that have uh, ideas for the industry. So tell me you can you, I will I will I thank you and I thank all my farmers that uh, Listen this to me, my voice this afternoon. And if I also ask that if there is any one or two things that uh, I could have said and I miss it out, I will come in. If you can give me ideas more on history, I will come in. No, nobody has monopoly of, monopoly of knowledge. So I appreciate you all. So, so come a thank you. But also shed light more on your academy. So this are the first and I'm going give you now. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? How about that? Tell me. Tell me. Tell yes, me. thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor Wagetti. That was very generous of you and also very kind. Uh, thank you. So, for Farmerland Academy, one of the reasons why we are asking for your email is so that we can send you details about the academy. Uh, we want to prioritize farmers education in Farmerland. And if you have your email shared, uh, be sure that within the week you're going to be getting information about the academy from us. But before we go, finally, if you like uh, uh, the academy to cover any particular topic, maybe any challenges uh, on your farm or there's something that you will want to learn more from, I think it would be a nice thing before you leave the room to drop that particular thing on the chat box. We are going to be picking your suggestion. We don't want to just organize uh, training or organize any farmer's education without getting your participation. Uh, we still have almost 100 in the room. So if you have any challenges on your farm or something you think you will need uh, Dr. James Baba Wagetti to share more light on, uh, we are happy to facilitate meetings like this and we will be getting collating those figures and then getting back to you. It's been a wonderful time. We spent around two hours, 30 minutes, and we want to thank every one of us uh, uh, for joining. And then for Dr. James, we can't thank you enough. The farming community in Nigeria cannot thank you enough. You've been of immense and immense value to every one of us. And we want to thank and pray that God will preserve you and keep you hale and hearty maybe for another 50, 60, 70, 80 years, uh, so that we can almost all be up with your years of experience and see how we can all be better. To everyone, please don't go without dropping your email or without dropping a suggestion for us. We'll be getting in touch with you. Please do have a wonderful evening. Thank you, everyone, and good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wagari. Thank you, sir. My brother. Hello? Hello, sir. Hello? Hello. Uh, good evening, doctor. Good evening, sir. Now, how do we man how do we properly manage our liquors in the farm? Can you come up with a seminar on that? Because that is one of the problems with poultry farmers. Okay. Uh, noted, I will, uh, yeah, so if you I drop the comment on the chat box, we are able to pick it up and not just I've your done, voice. I've, if you drop I've, I've, have you manage, okay. I have done that, we, but I hope that's what we Okay, sir. We'll get back okay, to you, go ahead, Dr. Wagetti, if you have anything to say. No, 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 no. We, we are going to work on that. We want to share how we are, how we are doing. We don't know where it's coming from. Is it a south way? Is it a north? You know, there are different angles. So we have to, there's a lot of data to get before we can answer that question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, I just want to give people a little more time before they leave to drop in their comments, uh, their okay. email, the suggested topics they want. So we'll, see, uh, we'll still leave the Zoom open for...
five more minutes so that you can take your time and type in exactly what you want uh, the next uh, academy or training, online training to be focused on and what you will want to learn in the industry. So uh, in five minutes time, we'll be closing the room, but you have an opportunity to quickly drop your email. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I will quickly the channel's uh, handle for you to subscribe and then open. let's do this together. Uh, tell me, maybe we can put the video, the video. Okay, okay, okay. I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, 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 sir. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. And you? Sir. Good to see you all. Thank you, sir. I just hope and believe we enjoyed the presentation. Well, you, we thank God. All right. Anyway, the little things I know we just need to talk about is the changes in our feeding system, the timing will be, then the closing of our nipple line, and cleaning of our water tank, and if there's a way we can protect that, I'm sure the manager will be telling us more. But those are the few major things I picked from the presentation. Uh, we are encouraged to feed between 4 and 5 a.m. Yeah. And to get this done, that means we need to wake up early, put on the light. Exactly. So by 4 o'clock, or 4 o'clock, maybe 3.45, we need to on the generator. Exactly. The generator is that the way? That's going to be a bit difficult for all of us, I know. But then, if we need to get good results, we no, have sir. to do this. I think the generator is not throughout the day. It's not throughout the day. Only, it's only on the day from 4 to 46. Throughout the day, it's only from 4 to 6. Hello, sir. Yes. Now, we are approaching the rainy season. Yeah. And just as you have said, it's possible to know what the temperature will be tomorrow. Yeah. Very possible. We can answer it. Very possible. Very possible. If you look at this, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Network. Okay, no, maybe no network. I think I missed it. I, I hear a small background. Uh, then I muted the person. I didn't know it was him. But uh, he can just, can you unmute yourself? Okay, go okay, ahead. Okay, I've, I've done that, that, that. Supposing you know the temperature tomorrow is going to be below 30, do you still, do you still keep to such feeding program when you know that the temperature will not affect the feeding habit? And how will the best response, the best that have been used to, no, one third feeding in the morning, two third in the afternoon. Would would that have affect them? Well, uh, no, because if you look at it, will not. If it is you are the problem cause of it, it will not affect them. And uh, because if it will be even good for them, if you are do like that. But provided that you know you are, you are, you didn't reduce the the ration, they are still taking the normal ration. It's all that you have adjusted the time of the way they used to be. And if you look at for the layer, for example, now, most of the layer, the only place you may have some issue that 
the pattern of potential may not drop, but the pattern of the laying, you may, you may adjust it, they will adjust it. Because mostly on farms, if you are feeding around eight or seven o'clock, the moment they finish, the moment they finish eating, you see they start laying egg. And that's why most farmers feed around six, seven, eight. And if you look at it, 80% of potential for that day is left from the late from nine to twelve, eighty percent. So that image you see that we change it. But in because I've done this one in terms of uh, they will be, they will be perform better master because because during heat and you are you allow them to live from the heat because if you don't do like that they will not be eat much master they will not be eat the much feed too much but that's why you to allow them to eat more so I don't think there is any you're not really rational they are still taking the normal ration you are just trying to promote them to eat more that's the only thing if you look at the formula we give you you are trying to enhance them to eat more food. Okay, sir. Thank you. It's clear. Yes. But let me get it right. Is that for the, like, the part of them, maybe you have to use the detroit. No, this is now 600 diesel. So you cannot afford to run with the throughout the night. You own either 4 or 430. By 6 o'clock, you off the generator. And normally, if you want to get good production, you must do lighting program. You cannot do, you cannot raise poultry without having lighting program. There's no way you can, you can you cannot get it. If you just the normal, the normal daylight, there is no way about to perform. You may make money, but you cannot maximize the money. That was yeah. ah. yes. you, may, you look at yourself. That was sometimes you sit down on your farm. How many farmers know? How many birds lay egg in cycle? They may not know. What farmer are looking at is a, is a passenger production. Is a passenger production. But I don't look at the passenger production. I look at one layer. After I finish selling them, how many one of them lay an egg? Like our farm that we, we sell our bags at 88 or 90 weeks. So at that 88 and 90 weeks, at how many eggs one bag lay an egg? So we make sure that because our farm is automated, it's standard, we make sure that we get 330 or 340, one bag lay egg in a second. But I can tell you, sir, even those farms that are making money, alternatively, Farm don't get even 270. They don't get it. <laughs> That's it. Go, go, go on to calculation. I don't I, I, the I don't get it. Because you don't, you don't, people don't do such. People don't put their mind on it. Mind on it. And that's why, because one bag supposed to lay 12 crates in a circle, or at worst, 10 crates. And that was sometimes, if you, if you are on your farm, and sometimes this poultry business is more of psychological. If, for example, your bath are 70 weeks, your bath are 80 weeks, 90 weeks, 20 weeks, and you lose one bath, people, professor, attendant will say, okay, it's only one bath. But if my bath are 80 weeks, 90 weeks, I'm not looking at one bath, I'm looking at 10 crates. You have lost 10 crates. It's not one bath, it's 10 crates, because those are supposed to make 10 crates a second. So, but everybody is aware of that, everybody will be conscious of it, and you maximize your money. Let me give you an example, like I've said in my training. I was in Abuja 2019. I have so many examples, even this year, but let me use the one of Abuja. I do training like this, but physical training. One farmer came, uh, met me and said, doctor, ah, my farm, well, me, what you are saying, we are doing very well on our farm. Uh, you know, I don't miss training. That's why I'm getting it. I'm coming with my supervisor, manager. But some people, when they're training, the only the other will come and they will not do anything. My farm good. But when, when are you coming to visit my farm? I said, okay. Uh, let me come tomorrow. It's at Kubua. The farm is at, at Kubua. I, I, I went to the farm, and luckily, the, the time I went, they just sold 20,000 bags. They, they got 20,000 capacity, but they sold only 1,750. They paid 20,000, but after selling at the end of the day, it's 17,500 bags. That's about 2,500 and died. So I said, Give wow. me the record. And so I asked him, What? I, I, and then we see 88%, 87, 86. I said, I'm not after that one. What I'm after is how many one but lay an egg in, in, in a year. So he, he gave me the record. I spent two days, I came back to the farm. I just, out, out of my calculation, I found out that one bird lay 265 eggs in second. This bird is getting 88. So by the time and I said, let me take minimum, minimum farmers want to get 300 eggs per, per second. At 80 or 90 is low. I'm not looking at 100 years old. Okay. Minimum a farmer will get is 300 birds. And I said, if you remove 300 minus 265, 
that is that is that is that means the man has lost lost one one bus lost by 35 pieces of egg. We now multiply 35 eggs times 2,500. About one, something 1,000 eggs. At the end of the day, what we must, at that time, you were selling 950. The farmer has incurred in, in 17 million. 17 million. The farmer wow. has it. Yes, but you don't know. 17 million. But then multiply, multiply uh, 35 times 7,500 naira. You get a piece of gold by 30 credits. The other multiplied by 9,005. It's about 17 million. But you don't know. That's what's happening in the industry. And that's why we bring all these things. So he he, he was taking bus, he, he booked bus from Ajala. They supposed to arrive on 20th January 2000. I said, when the bus arrived, call me to come. My target with you is to get 330 or 320 or minimum 300, not 265. He paid for, I went, I paid for my flight. I pay accommodation. That's the service at the most free. I train their, uh, I train their staff. But those that are not good, I tell them to sack them. I don't care for this business. So that so the manager that they kill kill. I don't that is not. You just be arguing. I say I cannot get to know the manager sack him. This is what the business. It's our life. People are invested, and he has to go to recruit because if you be argue, 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 and say sack him. This is what there's no as far as he can do now. There's no can get to the goal. Sack him. And he said, the, I, I, was, I, I, I don't care. And the man followed my story. The man said that for me to leave Lagos and came there, that means I would have taken one couple from him. That means the man said that, so why am I doing He said, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I, I love you. And that's how we turned the staff. <laughs> we brought another, do you know, sir, that man sold the bus, he sold them, if you look at the same, he sold them in November last year. Often calculated one but less than fifty eight. Wow. Yes. Compare with two fifty-five. Yes. You, you can go to Abuja. That woman I mentioned her farm also. The one I showed the picture. The friend that wanted her farm. Her farm was doing good. You can see that place, you get the eight. But there's a gap there. Before the bus will reach peak, before the bus will reach peak, eight eight seven the bus has to be on the seven to eight percent, twenty eight weeks. I say it's normal. If you are not getting 88 at 23 weeks, the farm is gone. Farmer was wow. getting oh, no. If you are not getting 88 percent at 22, 23 weeks, you are not a farmer. You are losing. She said, "No, no." Manager said, "No, no, no." no. There will be problems. I said, "Who talk? problems? Is a bad management. There's no way a bank can have problems if you do a good work. If you see problems, if you see any problem on the farm, it's a bad management. There is no way my bank can have problems. It's not possible. It's a bad management." That means the bus don't have the right weight. That's what the problem is. And the feeding, how they feed it. You control it. And we do that training and they understand the bus that the woman took, I monitored them to 20 feet. I made sure that all the standards after 20 feet, I said, okay, I I'm now okay with your bus. When the bus are 22 weeks, the woman just called me, doctor. My my mother wants to talk to you. I say it's my mother. I say doctor, when can I when will you come to me so I can train you? And I get this example for that. So these are things that is happening. Oh. A lot of issues. Huh? Ah, it's, I feel like I'm trying. Thank yes, you, sir. You, you you you've really tried. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. So All me. right, so I think the five minutes, uh, the five yeah. minutes we gave <laughs> has been overtaken by another insightful session. So we, will, we should all just keep tuned. Uh, if you've submitted your email, we'll be letting you know more of uh, this training so that you can be part of it. As I said initially, you can also watch the replay on our YouTube channel. I've shared the link of the replay. Thank you, everyone. And then please do have a lovely afternoon. Thank Evening, you. brother. Thank you, Dr. James. Bye-bye, All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye.